So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure it's safe? Whatever. We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Welcome to the Barbecue Central Show. The show where we talk about all things that are important in the world of barbecue. From big name interviews with competitors on the barbecue circuit, grill manufacturers and pit makers, to advice on cooking brisket and ribs. You'll find it all right here on the Barbecue Central Show. Your host, Greg Rempe, is a backyard barbecue and grilling fanatic and loves to talk about his passion, which many of us share together. You can learn more about barbecue and grilling by visiting the website the bbqcentral.com now let's get in the smoke here's your program host greg rempe hey gang welcome to another edition of the barbecue central show holy cow ladies and gentlemen let me tell you about keith jackson uh, this is the outdoor live fire and cooking show that originates from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. I'm your program host, Greg Rempe. Happy to have you aboard here on a spectacular Tuesday. Whoa, what's up, Central Lights? How's your life? 877-448-0433 is the number to call to get in tonight if you want to do that. Also, you can email the show at any point, greg at the com. Just in from a stellar softball game that my oldest played so i apologize for the disheveled look i know i'm not nearly as polished as i looked last week but i was coming in from work last week uh, but nevertheless uh contact information if you want to jump in talk about something outdoor live fire maybe you've tested some equipment maybe you've tasted a sauce that you want everybody to know about whatever the case may be as long as it has to do with Live fire, outdoor cooking in some form or fashion. We're happy to have you contribute. 877-448-0433. Greg at thebbqcentralshow.com is the email address. All right. Big show lined up tonight. In about 12 minutes from now, we're going to uh, jump across the pond, as it were, and talk with Toby Shea. He is the president of the British Barbecue Society. Uh, This will make two weeks where we've talked about barbecue in some form or fashion As it relates to England, we'll get a little bit more in-depth perspective from somebody that actually is English, from what I assume, unless he had an outrageously good English accent when I talked to him on the phone earlier today, uh, because we talked with Ray Lampy last week, who, by all accounts, is still not English, per se. So we'll talk to Toby about the British Barbecue Society, uh, what they did this past weekend, which was not grill stock, which was the item that we talked about with Ray last week, and then... Uh, see how the American style cuisine, which is barbecue, is kind of infesting over there in jolly old England. So Toby Shea coming up in about 11 minutes. Segment after that, Dave ba- uh, Dave Bosca from Butcher Barbecue will be joining us. By the way, newest sponsor of the show, Butcher Barbecue, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. What better time to have Dave back on to talk about just barbecue in general, one of the top competition teams out there, especially for the last handful of years. Huge barbecue knowledge, huge meat knowledge, uh, just about what it all comes down to, the butchering, pork, beef, whatever. Uh, Dave, that's his business, so he knows all about it. Plus, he happens to have one of the best products out there on the competition scene as it relates to injections. He's also got uh, sauces as well, and uh, we're going to talk to him about 35 past the hour. So welcome aboard to Butcher Barbecue as a proud sponsor of the show. Very happy to have Dave on for, uh, just like it is with every sponsor, it's always month to month. So if he stays for one month, I'm happy to have him. If he stays for a year, I'm happy to have him. Uh, But however long he uh, deems this relationship beneficial to both parties, then I am happy to have them. And again, one of the best products, one of the most well-received products out there in the competition world as we speak, uh, Butcher Barbecue, uh, the website butcherbbq.com. So look for Dave coming up in about a half an hour from now. And then we're going to try something a little bit different in the second hour. I was contacted by a partner show on L.A. Talk Radio. It's called Broad Topics. They follow me. Uh, L.A. Talk Radio carries the first hour of the show, not the second hour. And then uh, L.A. Talk Radio then transitions into a show called Broad Top, Broad Topics, which is a gaggle, a bevy of beauties that talk about pretty much whatever they want to. That's why it's called Broad Topics. And they've contacted me to do a show or an interview with them during their show tonight. They didn't realize that I've carried on a second hour here for the last year and change or however long it's been and uh, they wanted to talk some general barbecue and grilling i said ladies love to do it 
Unfortunately, I'm going to be right in the middle of my second hour, right at the top of the second hour. But maybe, just maybe, we could do something kind of crazy, kind of out of the box, if you will. How about, while I'm doing my live show, you go ahead and interview me on your live show, and we can see how that works out. Then we've all agreed that we'll at least take the shot. It could be tragic. It could be substantially entertaining. It could be neither and a waste of 15 minutes. But why not give it a shot? You can actually take part in seeing what it's like when I actually give an interview instead of the person conducting the interview. Probably not nearly as entertaining as it will mostly be when I'm interviewing uh, the, the stars of the barbecue community. However, why not give it a shot? You can you, The people on Instant Feedback will be able to lambaste me with all the incorrect knowledge that I am disseminating upon all of the women out there in the country, and it'll be a great fun. So that's going to lead off uh, the second hour, Broad Topics interviewing me during the live show of Barbecue Central Radio Show, which is the second segment, better known as After Dark. That's what's on tap. After that, I'll be sharing some thoughts about some things that have nothing to do with barbecue that I need to get off my chest. And we also have rooftop barbecue stuff to give away. We also have Albuquerque seasoning, which I will also uh, try to give a review on as well because I was able to try that rub out. Uh, Let me give you some very brief information here. Uh, let's see, during the live show. This is in from Fred Gross. We've been running a special. Uh, Fred has been gracious enough to run a special for Barbecue Central Radio Show fans. Uh, it started on the 1st. It's going to the 10th. Right now you get 50 per, uh, 56% off of your order, any order, as long as you use the checkout called uh, Mojo Radio. So people have been ordering up by the boatloads, getting 56% off, of course, less shipping. But it's a huge savings. And Fred has been so pumped up by the amount of reaction that this has been generated, he has decided to offer an even special in-show discount. And he said that whoever orders during the show, he will add an additional four pounds of wood to every order that comes in. So you get 56% off plus... Four pounds of Mojo Bricks. That's a $7 value for proving the Barbecue Central radio show fans rock. So between 7 and 11 Eastern Standard, uh, July 5th, which is tonight, any orders coming in will be awarded an extra couple of Mojo Bricks. Simply note in the comments section during checkout as to which uh, flavors that you would like. And I believe there's maple, oak, and cherry. So there you go. Uh, Also, if we get 10 orders during the show, Mojo Bricks will... uh, We'll ship Barbecue Central two packs for future giveaways on the show as well. So uh, 56% off no matter what, no matter what. And if you order during the show tonight and put in the flavor you want during checkout, during the live show tonight, you get an extra $7 or four pounds of Mojo Bricks. So that is outstanding. Thank you very much, Fred. Glad it's working out for you. Glad you're finding... Uh, value in uh, putting together a huge discount for the centralites. Centralites love discounts. I think we've all noticed that uh, by uh, leaps and bounds. All right, so there we have it. We have Toby Shea coming up here in a matter of moments. We have Dave Bosca coming up from Butcher Barbecue after Toby, and then starting the second hour, you are going to be able to see me in interview mode. Not me interviewing anybody, but I'll be being interviewed by the hosts of Broad Topics. 877-448-0433 is the number to call Greg at thebbqcentralshow.com is the email address. Look, gang, I've been talking about this watch that I have I got for Father's Day for the last few weeks. And quite frankly, I can't stop talking about it. And you might be getting sick of it when I talk about it here on the show, but you have no idea what my coworkers have to put up with when I am at AT&T retail shop each and every day talking about how much I like it. Well, the fact of the matter is I just like it that much and I'm going to talk about it because it's the best watch I've ever had. And it's all thanks to my good friend Stephen DeFranco over at Stephen DeFranco Jewelers. He's actually based right here in Cleveland, but he ships all over the country, possibly all over the world for that matter. And he's carried over that Father's Day special. He was running the thirty five I'm sorry, the thirty percent off any Bolova Accutron watch. And if you mention me, Greg, or Steve, the owner, and then the term barbecue brother when you call in, he'll give you an extra fifty dollars off that watch. So whenever anybody's been like, man, you know, I would love to get that timepiece or this piece of jewelry or these gold earrings for my wife. I just don't know a jeweler. 
Do you know a jeweler? Guess what, gang? Uh, is this thing on? You know a jeweler, Stephen DeFranco. What? 30% off. You know you're finally that guy that knows somebody in the jewelry business that can get you that huge discount. 30% off any Accutron bowl of a watch. That's exactly what your host is wearing. Here it is. And it's a fabulous watch. I absolutely love it. I get comments on it all the time. I'm not bling guy by any stretch of the imagination. But I don't mind it when people compliment it so I can then talk about what I love about the watch, how it feels, how it's not a huge brick on my wrist. And it's a fabulous timepiece. It's wonderful. And I got it for 30% off. And I got an extra $50 because guess what? I already know me. Visit the website, please. StephenDeFranco.com. StephenDeFranco, D-I-F-R-A-N-C-O. StephenDeFranco.com to take advantage of it. You get free shipping as well, free gift wrapping, free batteries for life, free engraving, free polishing. If you live in the greater Cleveland area, Steve and his staff will show up to your house and set the time for you, for crying out loud. If you don't want to visit the website now, just go ahead and uh, hit up the Barbecue Central Radio Network's website. Scroll down. And you will see the Stephen DeFranco banner. Just click on that. It will take you right to the barbecue segment. Call in after you find your watch. And then re- be sure to mention my name or Steve's name. And then the term barbecue brother. You get $30. I'm sorry. You get 30% off your order and $50 on top of that when you mention us. StephenDeFranco.com, proud sponsor of the Barbecue Central Radio Show. We'll be back with Toby Shea in seconds. <laughs> Broadcasting live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. We are back 13 past the hour. Don't forget, coming up after Toby Shea, talking a little British Barbecue Society, Dave Bosca from Butcher Barbecue. ButcherBBQ.com is his website. And then I'll be being interviewed by Broad Topics at 10 o'clock tonight. Tables are being turned on your faithful host. I will be the one getting interviewed at 10.05 Eastern Standard Time. So stay tuned for that. All right, let's race to the hotline. First time guest to the show, barbecue lover... Toby Shea joins us here on the show. Toby, how are you, buddy? Yeah, not bad at all, Greg. How are you? I'm absolutely fabulous, Toby. And look, uh, let me mention this first and foremost, because the Centralites, uh, as a collective unit, are not very smart. Uh, It is six hours our senior in time right now. So we're looking at, uh, what, roughly 3.13 in the morning that you're doing this interview for me? Well, we're okay. It's 2.14, actually. Summer saving time or something like that. But uh, So it's not too bad. All right. So uh, hopefully you just stayed out, you know, hit up some pubs, and now you're rolling out after they uh, close at 2 o'clock. Well, at least they close here at 2 o'clock here in the States. So uh, you yeah, haven't it was, been... It, it, was, it was tempting for a while, but I thought better not do that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> Absolutely. Toby Shea joining us here on the show. Toby, you're the president of the British Barbecue Society and, you know, over the course of the show that I've done, I have talked to only one team. I don't know if they still compete because uh, of the loss of half of the pitmasters, uh, but it was Mad Cow. They had won the jack back, I believe, in '04, and really kind of shocked and shook the world up when they came to competition barbecue over here in the States. Uh, how did you get introduced to American-style barbecue, and what had really intrigued you about it? Um, well, it's, it's basically, I mean, the term over here, obviously, in, as you guys know, it low and slow. Um, it was more through circumstance than anything else. We had a, a, a kitchen that we ripped out, and uh, the company that was putting in the new one were taking too long about it. So basically, we had a young uh, young baby at the time, and uh, went down to a local department store, and they had uh, sort of like a Brinkman smoking pit uh, that was on offer. And I thought, well, it, it's got the capacity, I could stick it outside and cook everything I needed on it. Soon learned that by using the offset method, you know, charcoal and wood down one side, the rest of the food down the other, I could cook an entire meal without actually having to worry about it. So uh, after doing that for a while, um, it sort of like used to use it for catering the parties. Um, so sort of like people over here, it's, it's grilling that we're known for. So when you've got a large gathering, someone's always standing over the barbecue, flipping the burgers, doing the sausages. And, you know, that's what we're trying to educate people against now. 
um, I realised I could put a large joint of meat on there and um, literally go off and socialise. And I could enjoy this, the, the social environment with everyone else. And then the meat and the food would be ready at the same time um, later on in the evening. Um, after doing that for a while, I, um, I saw uh, an advert for a Traeger online. Um, was very tempted with that, so went out and bought a Traeger. And then there was a competition that took part uh, back in 2008, I think it was. So I had a go, entered that, and um, did pretty well in that and just got hooked. But there was no regular competition circuit over here. So, you know, I decided that we needed a, a, a competition circuit so that anyone that was interested could compete on a regular basis. We needed a fixed set of rules so that weren't going to change on a, a, a sort of like a almost weekly basis, which was happening over here. Um, and hence the British Barbecue Society was born. When you introduced it, when you started it up, what kind of a reaction did you get from the people around you? Um, the, the people that are, there, were, there were very few people that knew what it was all about. Um, I think in our first competition, we had five teams, um, but it's quickly grown. You know, in the second year, I think we went up to 12. This year in May, we had 19 teams that competed in the Pitmasters style competition. And that's the largest Pitmasters competition that's ever taken place in the UK. So what we're doing is actually starting it from a grassroots level and giving everyone the opportunity to understand what we're trying to do. We have one competition that's set aside that's not open to the public, so new teams can come along, you know, have a go without the pressure of the public being there. Um, the other guys that are now experienced that have been doing it three years actually giving out sort of like the hints and tips and advice all the way through the weekend as well. So we, we make it as friendly as possible, and it's a very family-orientated uh, event as well. Toby Shea joining us here on the show. Uh, the website, by the way, uh, BBQS dot com for british barbecue society if you want to check it out uh, i understand toby you had a big barbecue charity event this past weekend with pitmasters uh, doing exhibition you had seven of the top teams out there you had a grilling comp with over 80 competitors give us a breakdown of that event because i know there was also uh, some other event going on in called grill stock which i had uh, talked with dr barbecue last week about but uh, what was yours and, and kind of how does that compare to what grill stock was doing yeah, sure. If I can say first, the website is actually, it's got three Bs in it. So it's bbbqs.com. Yes, you're right. I'm misreading. <laughs> no, that's fine. Or just Google British Barbecue Society. That'd be great. Um, basically, the event, we were asked to uh, 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 put on a barbecue display for three days for um, a big charity event up in London uh, called the Big Festival, run by a chap called Jamie Oliver, which I believe uh, he's putting on a couple of shows over there and yep. causing a bit of a stir. Um, now we put on uh, a grilling competition we've got uh, two different formats we've got one called Ready Steady Q Uh, competitors are given a mystery ingredient and they've got five minutes to go to a marketplace then they've got between half hour and 45 minutes to cook a complete dish so we're running rounds of that and that's the adult version so we've got Kids Q as well which I know you guys do over there Um, and we've got two different age categories from the 7 to 12 year olds and the 13 to 16 year olds so Throughout the entire weekend, over the three days, we had 80 comp- competitors taking part in that, getting out a uh, final. And then because of space, they said, we really would love you to sort of like demonstrate pitmasters and show people what it's all about. So we took the seven top teams from our uh, uh, May event, and they all came along, cooked overnight on the Saturday night, um, and it went down a storm. It really did. Um, it, we had the trailers out there. We had uh, a jambo. We had a custom-built train that's over there. We had... Uh, uh, two superiors on the show as well and obviously the the standard wsms as well that uh you know just to show the public that you can do it on absolutely anything you don't need a big rig to start off with are the smokers available over there are you having to bring them over like import how does that work out well we've got um we've got one custom builder now um a chap that uh, runs a barbecue team called barbecue mates um, they're not, you know, they're not the same as sort of like the, the, the items we get in the states. Um, in the states, you use much heavier gauge steel. Um, the jambo was recently imported. The superiors have been imported. We haven't got anyone that's really got uh, the experience to fabricate uh, the equipment over here. So at the moment, it's costly. Yes, uh, you know, but people are, are really getting into this, and I think uh, showing their investment and how much they're actually investing into it is a positive thing, and it shows just how much this is growing over here. All right, so in regards to the competition, the British Barbecue Society, uh, how many events are you looking to put on during the course of a calendar year, and how are you going about setting up judging and rules? Is it based anywhere 
loosely or closely to you know a KCBS or an FBA like here over the states, or is it something completely original that you guys are doing over there? No, not at all, not at all. Um, basically, uh, we add one competition a year. I basically fund the competitions myself. We're, we're slowly bringing on sponsors, but we wanted to get a track record first. So this year, for example, we've got four events. We'll be you know demonstrating to the public to over a hundred thousand people this year at the various events. Um, now, uh, the, the rules are based very closely on KCBS. Um, we do blind judging. It's past the only in the boxes. Um, six items. Our scoring is almost identical. In fact, it is identical to KCBS. It's important. One of the reasons um, that I wanted to set this up, after sort of like Mad Cow Barbecue at the Jack Daniels, every single British team was finishing in the bottom ten. And this is basically because there's nowhere for them to compete. There was nowhere for them to practice. Right. So this this circuit really is um, a tool for them to use, anyone that's interested in competing over in the States, to come in and get regular practice against teams that are now improving at a tremendous rate, but using following exactly the same guidelines. Um, I believe blind judging, I know this is probably controversial on people you know that do the uh, Memphis rules, etc. but blind judging is really the way to go, and I think that was one of the, the, the downsides. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I love grill stock. I think that the more barbecue events we can have over here, the better. Um, but I don't necessarily agree with the format. I don't think that you can have completely neutral judging if your team is actually handing a plate you've always got some personal element that's going to influence your final decision. So blind judging, I think, has to be the way forward. Toby Shea joining us here on the show, talking about barbecue as it relates to England and his particular venture, the British Barbecue Society. So as time starts to wear on here, Toby, as you look you know, five, ten years down the road, where would you like to see British Barbecue Society at? How many competitions would you like to see being put on? How many teams would you like to see uh, taking part during the course of the year? What do you think? Well, I think if we can get uh, 20 teams on a regular basis, that would be fantastic. Um, we've already got a hardcore of about, you know, 13, 14 uh, July. We've got another competition in a couple of weeks' time, and we've already got 13 teams signed up for that, including a couple of new ones. But, if, if you know, we, we've got the hardcore there. If we can get 20 teams, uh, if we can get 10 competitions, because our, our barbecue season is shorter because of the weather, um, people don't want to go out and see something like that. So really, we're looking at starting May. We can probably go up to September. There's only a certain amount of weekends that we've got. Um, there's only a certain amount of pitmasters that can join in as well. But we're in talks with uh, uh, various companies, one a, 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 a cash and carry, as we call it, called Booker. Um, and something that I'm putting together for them is almost like uh, your Sam's Club chase, points chase, because they're a very similar organization to Sam's Club. Um, and actually, they've got the facilities that we could put on competitions up and down the country. They've got the, the areas, they've got the power, the water, the, you know, everything that we would need to put on competitions in fairly public locations. So if we can organise a points chase for next year as well, our competitions would suddenly jump to from four straight up to ten. But either way, we will be putting on another competition next year. We obviously have our, our overall circuit winner. We were given the honour by the Jack Daniels. Um, to send a grand champion over to the Jack Daniels Invitational. That's something that will be carrying on on an ongoing basis. Um, and uh, we also sent a team to the American Royal. And uh, if I may, I've got to thank um, all the people that help us out. Yeah, go ahead. You know, for, for the equipment for the Jack Daniels and uh, the American Royal. We've got Stuart Powell, Cook Shack and Fast Eddie Moran. Um, but also, you know, the, way, the reason why it's gaining in popularity, the reason why people are getting so much better at what they're doing, it's purely because of, you know things like Facebook and they're in constant so we're in constant uh, touch with people like Rod Gray, Ryan Newstrom, Johnny Trigg. Uh, you know all the guys are calling these people or getting details from them. And if it wasn't for the guys that are listening to your show and the people who are involved in it over there, when we come over, they're so friendly. Um, you know, but giving us the advice, they know they're pointing us in the right direction. If we didn't have that contact, we'd be going forward blind. And it's really important for the British Barbecue Society that we get things right over here. We put on a great show for the public, um, but we know what we're doing, you know, and it's, it's, it's working out really well. Toby Shea joining us here on the show. Uh, Toby, as you look at the landscape over there in England, you see barbecue getting uh, more and more intertwined uh, in the fabric, at least for the people that are out there doing it like yourself and your hardcore group of friends. For the people that are out there on the ancil ancillary side looking in, do they wonder what you're doing with those cookers? Uh, are they interested in the process? Do you see it? 
becoming more and more popular over there as it has become more and more popular here, especially probably over the last three or four years here in America. It has become available on television. You have schmucks like me doing Internet radio shows once a week with it. It has really become very popular. Uh, is it starting to garner any of that type of recognition over in England? It is. I mean, barbecue's going through a renaissance over here anyway. All you have to do is look at the TV chefs and the amount of people that are now introducing smoking. You know, they've now recognised that uh, smoke is a another a, a spice, as it were, another flavouring for your food. So it's certainly picking up that way. Um, and uh, all the feedback we're getting is very positive. We've got a, a forum that's up and running. It's now probably the, it was, it now is the biggest barbecue forum in the UK. And people can come in there and talk about anything you know, anything to do with barbecue. And I think because we are so open, we are a very friendly, good bunch. Um, there isn't a commercial aspect to what we do. Um, so it's, it's all encompassing. We, 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 you know, we're enticing people in. We want people to feel welcome. And the friendlier we can make it, the more people join. I mean, we've probably, in the last three years, we've probably introduced over 30 teams to this style of cooking, some of which come back for one competition a year, and it's their annual pilgrimage to do something like this. Um, so yeah, we're doing everything we possibly can. We are, you know, let's face it, we're 20 years behind the Kansas City Barbecue Society. Right. Uh, when they started off in the parking lot uh, for the first competition, not really knowing what they're doing, we were fortunate enough to have an idea of what to do by looking at how everything was set up over there. Um, so you know, in, if we can keep on going at this rate, we're increasing almost 50 percent a year. If we can do that, if we just focus on our May, com- May competition, if we can get up to you know, 25 to 30 teams next May, we know we're going in the right direction and our growth will be consistent. It's still very early days here and I think there's huge potential for this. Toby, does there seem to be at this point a favorite of the traditional style of barbecue meats, the brisket, the pork butt for pulled pork, the ribs or the chicken over there? Um, well, popularity to the public is always going to be ribs, to be honest. We uh, we uh, had a people's choice category that uh, we decided to throw together at the exhibition at the weekend purely for a bit of fun. And uh, I've never seen so many ribs disappear so quickly. Um, I think it's just easy. People don't get good ribs. You know, you go to a restaurant over here and the, the restaurants don't have any concepts about how to cook ribs. So they're all uh, pre-done, vacuum-packed. Um, absolutely horrendous. So when people try a decent rib, it blows them away. Um, we've got competitors that are sort of like really into the Texas method. So they've got the dry briskets that they absolutely love. Pork is a favourite for some teams. So the, each team has its own uh, uh, own favourite. But the public, I think, ribs are always a winner. Toby Shea joining us here on the show. Again, the website, bbbqs.com. That's for the British Barbecue Society, and as uh, Toby said, they have one of the biggest or probably the biggest forum uh, over there in England as well. Uh, Toby, I know it was kind of a, a short, compressed time, but certainly appreciate the insight onto what you're trying to do out there, and I would love to have you back on again sometime, even for a roundtable, to talk about how you're uh, doing all the pork butts and, and stuff like that, too. So, uh, once again, thanks for the time, and we'll look for you again soon. Yeah, no problem at all, no problem at all. If I can ask one last thing, if your uh, listeners can go on there and like our Facebook page, it would be really much appreciated. <laughs> all right, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hook it up and we'll send them right over to the Facebook page and uh, we'll, we will like you over here, all right, Toby? That's fantastic. Thank you very much, Greg. It's been great speaking to you. All right, take care. There he is. It's okay. Toby Shea, British Barbecue Society Presidente. So go over to the Facebook page. <laughs> what a Facebook, fake book. Who are we talking to? All right. Uh, sorry. Sorry I had a slip of the tongue, Fred. Sorry. Get that big stuff out of here. I'll have to find the Facebook page so I can link it up in the show notes. But why not like? I mean, who doesn't like to like one more page? There are uh, a, a people over there that are trying to do what we do. They're like, Toby said, they're like 20 years apart at this point as far as where they are in the infancy and the growth stages. Uh, Toby Shea was just my guest right there. And again, the website, uh, three Bs, BBBQS, British Barbecue Society dot com is the website. So go ahead and check that out. See what it's all about. Uh, And thanks again to Toby for coming on. Uh, Before we get to Dave Bosca from Butcher Barbecue here in our next segment, I want to take a few minutes to tell you about the very first and longest sponsor of the show. You know them from Warminster, Pennsylvania. They happen to be the barbecue guru. And traditionally, I would sit here for the next few minutes and tell you about automatic pit temperature control devices and how they're great, especially for working professionals or for people that just don't want to sit there and, I don't want to say they don't want to tend live fire, but they would rather be 
have they would rather have the option of doing something else if something were to come up spontaneously, like they wanted to run to the grocery store for an hour and a half, or they want to put a pork butt on and go to the pool, where those would be the items as far as automatic but temperature control devices that you would want to get in order for you to have that type of flexibility and freedom around the pit. But what I want to talk to you tonight from the barbecue guru is this Onyx oven, for crying out loud. I mean, have you seen it yet? It is available for sale. It is the premier cooking object that the team barbecue guru uses and they win on i know i mention it every now and again but they won or they were sorry they were reserve grand champion at last year's jack daniels and they cooked with the onyx cooker now this item is easily transportable so if you're looking at possibly getting to some type of catering where you live people are demanding your barbecue all across the neighborhood to have you do parties for graduations and during the summer or whenever uh, because it doesn't matter if you're in a place like i am where you experience in all four seasons during the course of the year uh, the onyx cooker is very well insulated and it is also very adaptable obviously because they're the makers of the barbecue guru to outfit it with some type of automatic pit temperature control devices. An awful load of charcoal, you've been getting burn times for like 22, 24 hours or longer, depending on exactly what type of weather element is outside. In, in the inside, you can put in whole pans, whole catering pans. You can put in half pans. It doesn't matter. This is here to outfit you. Plus, if you're a competition cook and you don't have huge rigs and you don't have huge setups like some of these monster teams do out on the competition circuit, these Onyx ovens are something that can fit into the back of your car. They can fit into the back of your minivan or your cargo van or whatever, but you have to check them out because they are one of the most phenomenal cookers out there on the market today, and they're winning on the competition circuit today and in your backyards. You find them two ways, the thebbqguru.com, or you can always call in 800 800- 288 guru that's 800 288 good guru the good folks over at the barbecue guru thanks again to toby shea we're going to step away for just a few seconds and we'll get dave Bosca on the line to talk about butcher barbecue stick around we'll be right back get in the smoke call 877-448-0433 to get on the air now here's your host greg rampy Welcome back. 32 past the hour. Thanks again to Toby Shea for joining me talking about barbecue in England. British BBQ Society is where it's at. Website BBB, triple B, BBBQS.com, British Barbecue Society. All right, as promised, we go to the hotline and we bring up newest sponsor of the show, Dave Bosco from Butcher Barbecue. Dave, great to have you back on the show. How are you, buddy? Oh, we're doing good, Greg. All right. Well, thanks for taking the time out to join me, Dave. Uh, lots of places that we can actually start talking about tonight, not, uh, of course, uh, to diminish anything with the new partnership that we have uh, joined uh, both Butcher Barbecue here and the Barbecue Central Radio Show. I'm honored that uh, you are uh, confident enough in the show to uh, admit to the masses uh, the quality product that is Butcher Barbecue injections, rubs, and, of course, you do have sauce as well. So for the people that, uh, for probably the few people that have been living under rocks that aren't familiar with the product, uh, tell us about the injections, what they offer when you are actually putting them in product, why you would want to use them, and if you think that it should be a competition-only thing or if barbecuers in the backyard could use them as well. Well, I think that they should be used everywhere. Okay, let's be real. Um, I think if you want tasty, juicy product, use it. It's not a fix-all, and it can't fix stupidity when it comes to cooking. It just helps to alleviate items and let you concentrate on other things, be it uh, beans or competition chicken or a beer. I mean, concentrate on that and let the juiciness be what it is. All right, so if I'm trying to be contrarian here for a second, Dave, and I say, look, Dave, I I cooked 
four pork butts here on last Wednesday when I had a couple days off. And I didn't inject them. I rubbed them down uh, with some uh, Albuquerque seasoning that I got from uh, Kirk over there. And they were fabulous. I didn't inject them. They, they seem to be pretty juicy in my estimation. This is coming from a guy that has never injected. So if, my, if I think my product is pretty damn good right off the bat times four, like I did, it, am I to believe that it's going to be even better if I would have injected it with some butcher barbecue pork butt injection? No, oh. but what it can do is it can help change your flavor profile by adding other things in with the injection. Um, a lot of people on pork will add fruit juices, uh, nectars, uh, things like that. Well, you're going to have to excuse us. There's someone coming to the door. <laughs> um, that way um, you can change your profile without... I mean, if you're just going to put a rub on it, that's not going to do anything major right. on the inside. This way you can help change it all the way around, deep inside it, outside it, and still retain moisture. Where the major chain it changes with the pork is on um, the uh, uh, pork loin. If you're going to do a pork loin mm-hmm. or a um, tenderloin, things like that. Now, with brisket... Brisket is brisket. It, it, most of the time, if you're going to cook this in the backyard, people don't realize that it's dry until they try a product like mine. Then they realize, wow, I didn't realize what I was actually leaving out for the last 10 years. Um, in competitions, like I said, it's not a fix-all. It's not going to give you that first place or that fifth place. Um, it's just going to help take away one of the factors and let you concentrate on everything else. Um, I've always said that the last 15 minutes of what someone does in a cook cycle is as or more important than the first 12 hours. So you need to be in more circumstances to be able to know what needs to happen to fix what's just happened. And this is one thing you don't have to think about is with an injection, it helps hold that moisture in. And by doing that, there again, I go as flavors. Dave Bosca joining us here on the show. ButcherBBQ.com, the website, newest sponsor of the show. Uh, Dave, for the people that don't understand the science and why injecting your beef or your meat or whatever the case may be is beneficial, how does the product actually work when you're putting it inside a butt or when you're – that didn't sound good. When you're putting it inside a butt or when you're putting it inside brisket? All right. The the actual makeups of the of my product is HVP. It's hydrolyzed vegetable protein, some phosphate, a little MSG, um, exanthium gum. Exanthium gum is used for the thickness, and I feel you need a thicker product to help hold it in there till it sets up. The phosphates, what they do is they help what, when they re, when they rehydrate, they they had actually adhere themselves um, to water molecules. And the water molecules will then adhere to the muscle. But by doing so, you can add flavors inside that water that will help hold it inside uh, the meat. And that's mostly the whole process. And HPP can be used as a natural enhancer. It can be used um, for tenderizing. So there's all, multiple things that that, can, that has aspects to. Dave Bosca joining us here on the show. So between... The pork injection between the beef injection, as far as your sales go, popularity, do you find one that is more of a favorite, whether it be, well, I mean, just through, you know, normal sales volume, which one seems to fly off the shelves better for you? The beef injection is far more uh, larger sale than pork because pork has a lot of, like what you were saying, I would say less people inject pork than they do beef. Um, Beef being the solid muscle and where it actually comes from on a beef, it's, it, it it's used more, so it needs more assistance in getting getting to where everybody, everybody likes to eat it. The pork has enough connective tissues and inner muscle uh, fibers to help keep it moist on its own. Now, there's uh, brines that are out there. Do you have brines available as well, or are you just uh, with the injections? Well, we have a, a product that we actually released about a month ago called Grill. Um, I actually have been working on that about a year, and the basis of it is 
for chicken, but it can be used in so many different aspects. We we brined and cooked ribs in it. Um, we've done chicken. We we we've done steaks with them. The product is 100% soluble to where it will dissolve almost instantly. Um, you can brine with it. You can inject with it. I I actually in my competition I inject and brine both with this product. Um, when I was testing this a few months back, I took three slabs of ribs, cut them down to St. Louis, brined them and didn't inject them. I just brined them in our grill product, weighed them before and weighed them after. And in two and a half hours, they had already gained um, a little over a quarter pound of moisture. That is a, that's a lot of moisture in a thin rib. So I, and when I cooked them, yeah, they were very moist. So that, that's a big plus right there. So for the product grill, is it adding a, a like a grilled flavor from what I was understanding when I was reading on the website? Yes, that's that's the flavor basis, and, and I build it off of what we do. Um, I grill chicken in competitions, and I wanted something that someone could put in the smoker. And they and our slogan is with that product is you can get the flavor with or without the flame. That way you can use it in the smoker or put it on the grill. Uh, the moisture is great in it. Um, the flavor is great. It doesn't make it mushy. We grind in it um, 12, 14 hours. It doesn't make it mushy. And the flavor doesn't get too large where it gets pithy on the, on your tongue. The palate still stays clean after eating it. All right. So, and that is available for sale right now? Yes, yes. All right. That's Grill. So uh, be sure to check that out again. The website, Butcher BBQ. Dot com. They would quickly transition over here uh, for the remainder of the segment. Uh, you took place uh, or you took part in a competition in Girard, Kansas, the Smoking Hot Barbecue and Fireworks Competition. And as we peruse, uh, probably not like uh, when you look at a number of teams competing, not the most stellar competition. There were 30 teams. However, when you actually go through and see who showed up for this competition, pound for pound has to be one of the most competitive events that take place during the course of the year. You have Caveman Cuisine winning it. You have Munch and Hogs at the Hilton taking Reserve Grand. Oh, by the way, Dave Botska and Butcher Barbecue, third place. Thanks very much. Uh, finishing behind you, uh, Smoking Hills, you had a lot of bull. You had Pellet Envy, you had Bingo Pete. You had Smokers Wild, uh, and I mean, just seen one team that has been better than the next and been very high profile on the competition circuit taking place this past weekend. Uh, how did you feel about the third place finish going up against those teams? Very good. We, my brother cooked with me, and we were sitting in our trailer. Um, it was a Saturday Sunday contest. We were sitting there Saturday, and I was like, you know, I'd sure like to come out in top five in this crowd. And, you know, we were driving home, and we got third place, and you just feel – you still feel like a, a good accomplishment. Uh, you're not disheartened. Your food was great, and you just know that the judges did a great job. There had to be tons of great food. Um, and, and, man, just tickled to death with our with our turnout. I, was, I mean, our turn-ins and the outcome of the whole contest. And when you look at the results – you have between first and second, it was only a half a point separating Caveman and Munchin' Hogs at the Hilton. And then you were from first place to you, it was less than five points. So it had to be a hugely hotly contested event when calls were coming down. I mean, were you guys like biting fingernails and wondering who was going to come out on top here? You know, they actually called the top five. And so we were sitting there, or they called top 10. And we were sitting there listening. And when they started rattling off the, the, eighth and the seventh and then the sixth i'm like wow fine who's left who's left and we were all standing up there and um mike and uh rob and everything we were all standing there beside each other and we're like well who's got first and we was all saying it has to be chad it just has to be and lo and behold it was but man i mean there were still a couple teams that didn't make top 10 that we still that got a couple calls and we're like man we just you didn't know how to put your finger on it. It could have gone any way. Yeah, so, yeah. Again, I mean, you look at the list of the competitors that showed up, 30 teams, and you know, probably half of that could easily go into any competition and be an odds-on favorite to win any other given weekend. Uh, that was the smoking Hot Barbecue and Fireworks competition over there in Girard, Kansas. You know, when you look at the teams that show up that weekend and you said you were hoping you could finish in the top five, but, you know, when you load in, you get ready, you start your process, and I'm sure, you know, it's all consistency for you. you try and cook the same way each and every time. When you see 
the firepower that's around you, does it get the juices flowing a little bit more? Do you get a little intimidated or is it just, you know what, business as usual, no matter if there's one team or 500 teams here, we're going to cook the same? I tell everybody in all the contests when they ask me, um, who are you watching the most out here? And every weekend I say, I'm scared of every one of them. <laughs> that, and that's a fact. Um, it's anybody's game at any contest. If you don't cook what you know you can cook, you can't expect to win. But if you cook what you do, you can't control what other people do, and you can't control the judges. So I'm scared of every one of them because once you're done, you're done. It's out of your hands. So I just always put high expectations for myself, and I know our process is good. I know our flavors are good, decent. Um and it's just a matter of, of trying to hit my marks. And did I look through the crowd and go, man, I wish they had a flat tire? <laughs> you don't wish harm on no one, but they, got it. they all had to come to the same place we decided to. That's right. <laughs> uh, Dave Bosco joining us here on the show, uh, maker of the Butcher Barbecue Injections and uh, the new grill product. He's also got sauce as well. Uh, and uh, we're now uh, just recounting for last week's competition. Uh, you know, you've known a lot of these guys that did, you know, top 10 finishes for a number of years. You know, as you look back over all the teams you've competed against, people that you've been able to forge relationships with, any certain teams kind of stick out to you that you hope they're going to be at the next competition you're at, holding, you know, competition aside, but just people you like to see and talk to? Oh, yeah. We, we always get a good relationship and a friendship with everybody you see every weekend. Um, and, and this sounds crazy. I hope I compete against the same caliber people every weekend. I'm a firm believer in you can't beat Tiger if you don't play against Tiger. Uh, we, we always have the word bottom feeding. Um, there's no bottom feeding anymore in competition. Uh, the classes that went on the internet, all this kind of information that is out there, a first year team just to get a just to get into a sink of how to cook and how to turn it in and how to build a box, they're competitive. Uh but as far as who I like to see, absolutely. I like to see everybody. I, I like to talk. Um there's no doubt about that. And and <laughs> so uh no no one in team in particular, but but we always do enjoy seeing the guys that we cook with and the gals we cook with at all times. So yeah. Nothing, no one particular. A lot of people out there admit to using your product. Of course, I know there's other people that you know won't go mention it by name, but definitely one of the most revered products to help your barbecue be very good in the competition circuit. Do you have any percentage idea of, of teams that are using it out there in the competition circuit? Of course, holding to the firm number one rule of the show, no names, please. As far as percentage, no. Uh there's no way of knowing that. Um, I know how much we sell. I know how much we ship. I know how much we sell to retailers. Now, who they sell to, I, ain't, I don't have a clue. Um, but as far as a percentage of how many is cooking, I can go to a contest and say, okay, I've sold to them, I've sold to them, I've sold to them. And, um, then when you see them walk, you, they're as secretive as, as you should be and as I should be, I mean. And I'll... I'll kind of wink and, and, and point at them and they'll do the same thing back. And that next week they'll usually give me a call and say, dude, did you see that brisket call? Um, things like that. I get that all week long and that's what I love. That's what I really, really like about it is seeing either a seasoned veteran that has never and has professed of never wanting to inject. And then all of a sudden they're injecting and then their scores take off and we'll work with them over a winter or a downtime. And, um, they they'll then all of a sudden they're an injector. We we've taken some old hardcore folks that don't believe in injecting, um, and now are injecting, and they they realize what's what's out there in competition world and and the and the possibilities that can go along with injecting. That's that's the big thing. It's not just moisture and flavor. It's what they can concentrate on doing. It's the new flavors they can get in into their meat that's that's the big thing i think that's what a lot of people are are finding out is it's more than just pumping juices in a piece of meat dave when you decided to take your product that you had been using and that you thought was very good and bring it to market and sell it and then you started 
perhaps seeing teams take walks ahead of you in competition all of a sudden did in the beginning was it bittersweet or was it like look you know i've made that definitive decision to go in the retail and, and make money off of it and whatever happens happens but geez louise it is like crazy that this product they didn't have one year and now all of a sudden it's out there people are using it and they're kind of finishing ahead of me and that kind of hurts a little bit no never have i ever thought that ever uh not even a little bit i no, not a little bit. Because if I did, I should have never done it. Period. There That's you go. Simple. Um, but no, I've never sold something to. I'll sell something to someone that morning. Um, let them go right and cook it. That's great. I my whole thought is, man, I should have cooked better. That's the way I look at it. Dave Bosca joining us here on the show. ButcherBBQ.com is the email address. And, of course, we don't have to, but uh, any potential offer for the Centralites because they always love deals. Yeah, I'll tell you what we'll do. I have got this new barbecue sauce out. It's been out for just a, a short time frame. Um, to help reward the folks that are live listening, All right. Um, if you'll go to my website, and send me an email through my contact form on my website. We'll send you, I'll cover the shipping and the barbecue sauce. I'll send you a bottle of barbecue sauce. Just tell me you heard it on the Central Show. All right, heard it on the Central Show. Got to email that, though. Yep. Yep. First 25 folks that do that, we'll get them fixed up. All right, free sauce for you to try out Centralite. So I'm sure they're uh, going to crash the server here in just one second. You mentioned free, and it's like you've just said that steak is free for everybody. I don't get it. Uh, Dave Bosca <laughs> joining us here on the show. Dave, always appreciate the time. And uh, perhaps next time we can actually talk a little bit more about butchery and uh, meat and processing and all that stuff, really break it down, because I know that's a big forte of yours as well. Yeah, I'd love to do that. That's 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 my passion right there is, is meat. It, it's... I understand everything from raising them all the way to how they should be fed to the cutting. That's what we've done for 30 years. I've done wholesale, retail, um, cooking it. Um, gosh, I was raised on a beef farm three miles from where I live. So right now, so man, yeah, I can talk, I can talk meat. All right. Talk some meat. We're definitely going to be doing that. Uh, Dave, always appreciate the time. Thanks for coming on tonight. Greg, appreciate you. Thanks a lot. All right, there he is, Dave Bosco. ButcherBBQ.com. Can't wait to have that conversation. I would love to talk about what it's like to raise a calf and then feed it and then kill it and then butcher it and then so I can eat it. Nothing better than that. Uh, Don't forget, if you want to take part in that free sauce deal, if you go to ButcherBBQ.com and then click on the uh, email link and just tell Dave that you heard him on the show tonight, you'll get free sauce for the first 25 people to hook up with butcherbbq.com. Thanks again to Dave for coming out. Again, quick reminder before we uh, wrap up the first hour about Fred's Music and Barbecue. You know who they are by now. They are a premier online retailer of many things. If you need a grill, if you need a smoker, if you need something in between like a big green egg, the uh, hybrid of cookers, if you need cookbooks, if you need wood chips, if you need any type of accessory, because you already have a grill or smoker, then Fred has it. And you can get it one of two ways. You can get in your car and you can drive right down to Succulent Tropical. Beautiful. Shillington, Pennsylvania, which I really have no idea where that is. I think it's over by Philly. Or you can go online, fredsmusicandbbq.com, fredsmusicandbbq.com. And he has all of the his inventory online for you to buy to look at, Fred is a dynamic video maker. Uh, we broadcast, uh, we simulcast on Outdoor Cooking Channel. Fred has his own video uh, montage up on Outdoor Cooking Channel as well. He's a very charismatic guy. I have him on the show from time to time. He's a very accomplished backyard chef. He's now very into pizza. If you need anything that has to do with barbecue and grilling, then Fred Music and BBQ.com is the site you need to visit. A. Because he's a sponsor of the show, and as I always say, if you want to help the show, visit the sponsors of the show. Give them first consideration. But more important than that, uh, we talk about it all the time. you got to deal online with somebody that's reputable, somebody that maintains an inventory to meet the needs when the orders are placed, and somebody that you can feel 
confident in when you put your discretionary dollars out there for people to take on the Internet that the order is going to go through. You're actually going to get your stuff, and you're going to get it in a timely fashion. And that is everything that Fred does from top to bottom, one of the best online retailers of everything and anything that has to do with barbecue, especially if you're looking at Big Green Egg stuff, especially if you're looking at accessories for any type of grill, or if you want a Weber Smoky Mountain or Pro-Q or Bradley Smoker or a Weber Charcoal Kettle Grills or Gas Grills. It doesn't matter. If you're into music, he also happens to have a music shop right across the, like, connected to the barbecue shop, for crying out loud. I mean, he's amazing. Fred's Music and BBQ.com is the web address. You have to check him out. Give him first consideration. He's also got the Tasty Licks brands of sauces and rubs. A one-man gang. He's the smoking guitar player, Fred Bernardo, and a longtime sponsor of the show, so be sure to check him out. Fred's Music and BBQ.com. We're going to go ahead and wrap up the first hour, get ready for the Broad Topics interview coming up at 10.05 Eastern Standard. Stick around. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Eight seven seven four four eight zero four three three is the number to call. Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com. Thanks again to Dave Bosca for joining me, talking about the injections, how they work. Coming on as a sponsor of the show, the new product Grill is out. You can also get some free barbecue sauce right now if you head over to his website butcherbbq.com. dot com. Go ahead and hit on the email link on his website. Tell him you are listening to the show live right now, and he will send you a bottle of sauce for free. He'll even take care of the shipping. So, Dave, if you're in the chat, make sure you let me know if we hit the limit on that uh, for 25, and that way I'm not continuing to send people over there. Also, uh, Fred Gross running a special on Mojo Bricks right now. So between now and when the show ends at 11, if you go to mojobricks.com and you put in an order, you're going to get an extra uh, four pounds of wood with your order uh, just within these uh, three-hour time frame. You're getting 56% off that order, by the way, uh, regardless, less shipping. So get your order in early and often. If you do it right now during the live show, you're going to get an extra $7 or four pounds worth of Mojo Bricks. Specify the flavor that you want during the show uh, during checkout as well. All right, let's go ahead and give away some Albuquerque seasonings. I used this last week, almost a week ago. Very good stuff. The barbecue rub is a blend of New Mexico red chilies and 15 other spices for a truly unique Southwest flavor. And the sauce is a ketchup-based one that has a balanced sweet and tangy spice. I'm going to try out the sauce here this week as well. So if you want to win a bottle or a pack of that, 877-448-0433. 877-448-0433 is the number to call. And we'll get you hooked up with the Albuquerque seasonings. Wait a sec. Oh, I thought it said 614. Area code 617, name and where you're calling from. Paul Billiton, uh, Malden, Massachusetts. I'm sorry, what was your name, sir? Paul, Malden, Massachusetts. Hey, Paul! How are you, buddy? How bad are you? I'm doing absolutely fabulous, Paul. Thanks for asking. And if you're interested, I can hook you up with a two-pack, one rub, one sauce from albuquerqueseasonings.com. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. All right. All you have to do is send me your shipping info, and you will email that to greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. Don't forget the the in the front, uh, greg at the BBQ Central Show.com. I'll forward that down to Kirk, and you are a lucky winner, Paul. Awesome. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. All right. Love thanks for show. calling in. Thanks. <laughs> love you for listening, Paul, but not like that. I just love you. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and wrap up the first hour. Thanks again to Toby Shea joining me in the second segment, British Barbecue Society. BBBQS.com is the website, British Barbecue Society, talking about how American-style barbecue is infiltrating England. We will take you over, England. We'll beat you again. Happy Fourth of July, everybody, a day late, by the way. Also, thanks to Dave Bosco from Butcher Barbecue. Go and run over to his website right now for free sauce. 
butcherbbq.com. Click on the email link and tell Dave you're listening to the show live right now. He will send you a free bottle of sauce to the first 25 people that do it. Free. Doesn't get any better than that. Also, thanks to Kirk Moncrief for the Albuquerque Seasonings giveaway. Coming up in about uh, five, six minutes from now, I'm going to be interviewed by Broad Topics, talking about some barbecue and grilling tips, I would imagine. So stay tuned for that. Always good to see me get the tables reversed. I will be the one that is getting interviewed. I will not be interviewing. Also, don't forget to hit up mojobricks.com for your free extra four pounds of wood. Mojobricks.com when you use the checkout term Mojo Radio. All right, give me time to reload. We're coming with a Kent Whitaker, and then we'll be back with After Dark. Stick around. Be right back. Give me a beat. Hello, everybody. This is Gary Ben Nerd Chuck, host of Wine Library TV, a.k.a. WLTV, the number one wine show on the Internet. And this is BBQ Center. Are you looking for a new twist on a great recipe? Are you looking for something else to do at the grill or to impress your friends when you're tailgating? Or you just want a fantastic recipe in the kitchen? Here's some good ideas that are quick and easy that's going to add a little bit of culinary flavor to everyday dishes. I'm Kent Whitaker, and join me after these messages. Hey everyone, cookbook author and award-winning barbecue guru and homestyle chef Kent Whitaker here. You know, one thing I've learned over the years is that homestyle cooking can't be beat. So if you need a great cookbook that's easy to follow and is similar to having a great conversation on the front porch with family and friends, then pick up one of my books at your favorite bookstore. Sheila Simmons and I are crossing the country in search of great recipes from Texas to Georgia, from Tennessee to Alaska. So just ask for one of my cookbooks at your favorite bookstore or visit me online at thedeckchef.com. I'm Kent Whitaker, The Deck Chef. I'll see you at the dinner table table. I get the question a bunch about where you can go online and look up food safety questions, health questions, foodborne illness questions, and I always refer people to their local health department or local hospital, something like that that's in their community because a lot of these organizations have great information online. But if you don't have that or you want to look for something else, check out askkaren.gov, A-S-K-K-A-R-E-N.gov. Now, this is a website that you can type in common sense question as a virtual web assistant. You can type in these common questions about uh, foodborne illnesses, food safety, health issues, things like that, and it pulls qu- uh, answers from a database. Now, it's not as good as talking to a real person, but it is a really neat interface, and it gives you an opportunity to get some information right there at your fingertips. AskKaren.gov, neat place, and it has great links to places such as foodsafety.gov, another one of my favorite websites. And another one of my favorite websites, thedeckchef.com. Check it out, thedeckchef.com, for some great recipes, some from great food handling tips, some hand, fun information, and information on the negative Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. Fine, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> You have a great show. I'm a big fan. So what 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 seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the in the crackle. Charbono, it's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? He ate fifty four wieners. But listen, Laverne, it's chick feet. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seeds. <laughs> You could use it to fight off creeping marauders looking to take your steaks off your grills. I just like being anywhere with Junior, Senior, and Diva. Oh, for the whole at the movie. Wow. <laughs> yeah, really. Keep it hot, keep it clean, keep it lubricated. We have top men working on it right now. Ooh, top men. All right, welcome to the second hour, ladies and gentlemen. Happy to have you aboard, as always, 877-448-0433 is the number to call. Greg at the BBQCentralShow.com is the email address, in case you want to jump in. Just got a email from Toby Shea over British Barbecue Society, so he gave me links to the forum. Some of you guys are forum hoppers. We'll be happy to give you a link over there, so you can go... Uh, spout about whatever it is you people spout about on the internet forums. God damn it. You know, guys, 
just one time, I would imagine, look at all of you people that are watching the show. You know that I don't remember to take off the outro music automatically. I just never do it. Somebody won't remind me what's going on. With you. Come on. Every week I do it. I'm just asking for a little help here. You know I'm going to mess up, and you can. I think you people just want me to do it. It's too late now, by the way. It's too late now. But it happens every damn week. I hate it. Uh, we talked to Toby Shea last hour. Let me go ahead and reset here before we uh, connect into broad topics. Uh, but we talked with Toby Shea from British Barbecue Society, and Toby is a guy over there in England who's trying to make it work. And he has put together kind of a a competition circuit of sorts. And it's one of those things that, uh, you know, you see how popular it is over here. And then you wonder, how is it going to translate anywhere else? Is it going to be popular? And it has been nothing but extremely popular from what Toby has been saying uh, over in England. So it was great to talk to him about his particular event. I mean, they're only putting on one event During the course of the year, it happened to butt up against uh, another barbecue and grilling event that we talked about last week. Uh, So I don't know if there's any potential ill will or feelings of, we don't like you, but we like you, and we're better cooks than you are, whatever the case may be. Uh, But uh, there was very interesting talking with Toby, getting his uh, take and perspective on American-style barbecue. Also, we talked with Dave Bosco from Butcher Barbecue and his injections. He is a new sponsor of the show and giving away free barbecue sauce right now to the first 25 people that go over to his website, butcherbbq.com. And you can use the email link. Tell them you're listening live to the show right now and the first 25 people get free sauce. It doesn't get any better than that. All right, so uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and bring the sound up uh, on the ladies and I will let them know, I guess, that I'm ready. So kind of enjoy... Uh, what you're about to hear, again, this is kind of, they're doing a live show right now in L.A. I'm doing a live show here in Seatown, and we'll see uh, how this goes. Uh, I'll probably have to chat with them here in a second. Uh, so stick around for uh, me getting interviewed for the first time on the show live. It could be, again, could be tragic, could be absolute success. Uh, so stand by. Into the nip, oh, and explode. And- All right, we are, have Greg Rampey from Barbecue Central on the air with us right now. Greg, welcome to Broad Topics. Laura, how are you? Yeah. yeah. Great to be back on Broad Topics. And from what I understand, a gaggle of new broads since the last time I talked. <laughs> we have some new broads, new broads and some old broads. Oh, wait, I represent J- old broads. Is, is Joan still there? I am still here. Thank you for remembering Joan, me, Joan, God, I love Joan the most. No offense, Laura. Ah! <laughs> what the heck, Greg Remy, <laughs> Laura? <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah, sure. Hey, I know you're not. Stacy Lewis is one of our newer hosts. You want to say hi to Stacy? Hi, Stacy. Hi, Greg. How, How are you? Good. I'm How are you? School. You're yes, new school. That's right. <laughs> and Kelly Loman is actually back. She's been away from the show for about a year, but she is back guest hosting tonight. So you have three of the four original broads. This is one of the most awesome things that has ever happened because I have a bunch <laughs> of people listening right now. When the last time I believe that I talked. To broad topics, Kelly Loman was going away on hiatus. She hated the show. She was leaving on terrible terms. <laughs> yeah. And now you're back. I'm so happy. What happened? Well, I heard you were going to be on the show, Greg, oh, and hey. I just didn't stay away. All right. Well, I'll, I'll take it for what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, just so you know, if anyone out there has listened to uh, broad topics at the beginning, every single episode, we shout out to you in a spectacular way. And at you some do. point in my life, I'm going to do an edited version of it just for you to play on your show. <laughs> we do, Greg. All the amazing segues that have been made in your name. In your was, name. I was going to say, believe- I listened to the show, and my favorite part, aside from your great dialogue between all four of you, is how you're somehow going to turn how you're introing the show's topic into me injecting <laughs> some type of pork or beef or something. <laughs> That's our favorite way to do it. I love it. You know, Greg, uh, we were just talking about our 4th of July plans, and I was the only one who even attempted any grilling, and I went <laughs> sour, sadly sour. So would you please help tell us, first of all, what's the difference again between b- barbecuing and grilling? I know your entire audience is probably falling over on their backs right now. No, I mean, the basics of the whole thing, and we could talk for hours on end about differences, but uh, the very bottom line is this. Grilling is done is probably what 95% of the people do during 4th of July or when they're getting together to do a barbecue. 
And it's done at high heat, so we're looking at 400 degrees, 450 degrees and above, because there are contraptions that can go higher than that. And basically what happens is you have the heat source right underneath the grill grate, and then you have the meat on top of it, whether it's your burgers or your steaks or your chicken or whatever the case may be. Uh, This is done, let's say, at a maximum 15 to maybe 20 minutes, depending on what you're cooking. Uh, So that's grilling in a very small nutshell. And then barbecuing is done at much lower temperatures. So you're looking at 200 degrees to maybe 250 to 275 degrees. Uh, One of the biggest differences is the fact that the heat source has now moved from where it is uh, directly underneath the meat to something offset, or there's some type of apparatus above it to diffuse the heat directly, like a water pan or something of that nature. And it's done with wood smoke. You want to impart wood uh, smoke flavor uh, done with bigger cuts of meat. So perhaps you've heard of brisket. Perhaps you've Mm -hmm. heard of pork butt, uh, ribs, whole chickens. So these things, you know, at at the most expedient part of barbecue, you're looking at chicken. That could be two hours. Uh, And then you're looking at six hours, four to six hours for ribs. uh, And you're looking at like two hours a pound for pork butts. Those are typically seven, eight pounds. So it's 16, 18 hours there. And then pound or hour and a half per pound for brisket. And depending on what kind of a cut you there, that could be another 15 hour affair. So it's more of a labor of love. But the word I love the most when talking about barbecue is succulents and the journey and the reward that you get for putting all that hard work in is hardly comparable to anything else. Greg, it's Laura. I just want to say that the best part of what you just said was the, the way in which you spat out the word barbecuing when people call what they're doing a barbecue. <laughs> it seems to be a universal term. Oh, what are we going to do today, ladies? Well, we're going to have a barbecue and this and that, but it's fine. You can you want to interchange the terms, but I'm trying to disseminate proper information. So now you are all now being indoctrinated into central lights. So now you can talk to your friends and neighbors. And when they say, hey, barbecue, you can not only say, well, you're incorrect, sir or madam. And then you can really (laughs) bowl them over with all of this great information I have armed you with. Oh, I like how that sounds. Well, Greg, that's what uh, this is Joan again. I was thinking that very thing when you were going into your uh, delicious description of of the the two different types of grilling versus barbecuing and how many ignorant people out there just throw that term around barbecue like they know what they're talking about. (laughs) Yeah, really. Just drives me crazy now that I know the truth. It's willy nilly. These people just throwing terms around like it's reckless abandon. I don't understand it myself. So, Greg, this is Stacy. So how do I invite someone to a griller? I mean, wow. <laughs> come on, we're having a griller. What, what would I say? Help me because I'm going to have one pretty soon. Well, of course, the proper term is going to be cookout. A cookout. That's oh. what you say. Yeah. A cookout. You're right. My uncle used to mm-hmm. say, I'm just going to throw some bleep on the grill. Yeah. Oh, okay. A That's cookout. what he used to say. Oh. Yeah. Can you I'm, interchange that with even if you're going to have a barbecue? Well, if you're barbecuing, then you can say, yes, I'm having a barbecue. For instance, last Wednesday, I had two days off, Wednesday, Thursday, and I smoked pork butts for pulled pork. So I had people over. I said, I'm having a barbecue. And I I took those butts and I put some Worcestershire sauce on top and I took and I rubbed my butts really nice and firmly. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Tell me more. And then I I injected my butts with some special (laughs) injection. And when it was all said and done 14 hours later, because I love to take time with the butts, uh, yeah. They were just, you put your hand on top of it and it just mushes apart and it's oh. fabulous and succulent and juicy and you don't even need sauce because a lot of people think that barbecue somehow is in a, a term of relation with sauce and it has nothing to do with sauce either. And if you do it right, you don't need to cover it up anything. You get the pork flavor, the chicken flavor, the beef flavor in your mouth and that's really all that it's about. Our resident vegetarian, Kelly Lohman, has been shaking her head during that whole descriptive process. <laughs> Just What made bad. you more uncomfortable, yeah. Kelly, the, uh, the discussion of the meat part or the almost pornographic description of the pork butt? <laughs> of the pork butt. Well, I, I have to say the, the butt jokes never get old. And I appreciate them every time Greg makes them. What? And for those of you Broad Topics listeners, that's one of the very many reasons to tune into Greg's show. Kelly, here's the problem. The discussion. I, I'm, I am a man, of course. And most of my central lights are men, although we do have some central ladies. But when I start talking about the inner workings of barbecue, especially some of the competitors on the circuit, you have two grown men talking about injecting butts and rubbing thighs and this and that. And it could become, if you jumped into the show not knowing what it was about, you think you've turned into some type of homoerotic <laughs> program. And it's just part of the, it's part and parcel of barbecue. You can't get around it. 
It sounds it. pretty good. Hey, Greg, it's Laura again. I was just wondering, when you go to the park, right, and you see all those amateurs, quote unquote, barbecuing, and you look upon them with disdain, what are some of the big mistakes that they make, do you think? Well, let's get something straight out in the open. I am not a, as much as I'll sit here and talk about the intricacies of barbecue versus grilling and this cooker versus that cooker. I'm not a snob. I'm not going to come over to your house and judge you by what you're doing. If you don't ask me for help or anything like that, I'll eat and I'll make it seem like I'm enjoying it just fine. And then I'll go home and talk shit about you behind your back all day long. (laughs) But look, uh, I think when we're talking about grilling, some of the biggest mistakes that are made are these that I'll list off. First of all, people don't take care of their particular grill. Uh, this is an investment that you've put money in. Uh, I could tell you how to buy how to buy a grill, but even if it's a two hundred dollar grill that you get at Target or, or Walmart, you want it to last a certain period of time. So you want to take care of it. You want to maintain it properly. And that's obviously all going to depend on how much you're cooking on it. If you're like me and you're outside five, six times a week cooking on it, you're going to want to clean it a little bit more often than maybe once a year for the people that do it a few times on the weekend when it's warm out. Of course, I live in Cleveland, so I do actually have a winter, not like L.A. where I would just be out there all the time. But you want to take Mm -hmm. the grill grate off. You want to clean out uh, the flavorizer bars or the grease deflectors. You want to clean out the burners. You want to clean out the firebox that's underneath there so things don't catch on fire or things start to corrode or rust out. Take care of it. And then you want to, every time, preheat the grill as hot as it's going to go before you put anything on it. Preheat it as hot as it's going to go and then take a grill brush. Grill great. Wipe that off. Good grill hygiene equals healthy grill. No cancer that, you know, we talk about cancer and grilling now. All of a sudden that's BS to a certain degree. But if you start with a nice, fresh, clean grill, everything is going to come off nice and tasty. Then, when you put your meat on, tell me you haven't seen the schmuck at a, at a cookout, ladies, who the minute yes. he puts down a burger or a steak or a hot dog, he is after it with, like, a spatula or tongs. Yeah. Or things bent down for, like, <laughs> I knew that was coming. I was I like, mean, those people that press it on there. What the hell is this guy doing? <laughs> Have a beer, as my great Canadian friend Ted Reeder says. You know, put the stuff on the grill, have a beer, relax for five minutes, let it sear, which doesn't seal in the juices, by the way, but that's a different discussion for a different day. Uh, But it allows the meat to caramelize and to crisp up on the outside to give that nice crust, uh, nice caramelization of flavors on whatever it is that you're doing. And then, you know, for burgers or steaks, for instance, once, uh, once the myoglobin starts to pool on top of the part that hasn't been flipped over yet, then you can start to take your tongs and kind of start to lift it off a little bit. And if it's sticking, it's not ready to turn over. Don't tear it off and just flip it over because you think it needs to be flipped. The meat will tell you when it needs ah. to be turned. Ooh. So That's kind of lift like it up. meat whisperer. Once yes. it releases, then you can go ahead and flip it over. You can finish cooking. And remember, ladies, <clears throat> steaks are always at most best tasting, succulent, and juicy at a medium rare. And anything over that, we're going to fist fight if I see it. Yeah, oh my goodness. goodness. Wow. I, I think that's wise. Now, uh, Katie, now, Katie, Katie our producer, wanted to ask me, yes. uh, have you asked the question of if a charcoal grill, grill versus a gas grill is better? Well, I have like eight grills at my house. So <laughs> I think having all the grills is the best because that way you can use it to whatever your particular event <laughs> is for that evening. Or if you're having a big gathering, you can cook a lot of stuff at the same time. Uh, gas grills are very easy to use. Uh, They're very nice to get up to temperature to cook. Maybe you're coming home from work. You don't want to mess around with charcoal. That's fine. You light the grill. You go ahead and get your meat ready, and then it's all heated up and ready to go uh, after you get your prep work done. I think, for me, better flavor on a charcoal grill because you can use lump charcoal, which is carbonized wood. It has a better flavor. Plus, you can throw in wood chunks easier on a charcoal fire than you can with gas grills. I've always had a problem with like the wood chunks or the wood chips burning and actually catching on fire. And you need the smoke to impart flavor. And once they're burning, you've kind of eliminated that process. So for me personally, I like charcoal, but I don't think one is technically better than the other. And like I said, if you have both, you have the the best of, of both worlds. Now, if I might finish up on the mistakes that the beginners make. After you're cooking, yes. they don't then turn the heat back up to high and do a proper burn off. And, uh-huh. you know, you leave that. Once you see all the white smoke stop rolling out of the cooker, which means you've properly burned it off, then you can turn it off, let it cool down, go back over it with that grill, uh, grill brush again, and you have proper grill grates. It's clean and ready to go for the next time. Just those few steps can Greg. make you a better griller right off the bat. Greg, this is Laura. I'm sorry, but I have to take you down on, on that last one. I have an issue. What are you talking about? Do you want to hear it? 
I'm talking about a problem I have with you, Greg Rempe. All right, bring it up. <laughs> Here's the thing. So my husband listened to you the last time, you know, that he listened to your show. Yes. And he got yes. that advice about the burn off and yep. we tried very hard to follow that. And we ran out of tank after tank of protein be- – of uh, um, Propane. Propane because we could not remember to turn the freaking thing off. Well, look, Laura, are you having an issue with me giving out proper advice? Are you having yeah, yeah, an yeah. issue with your husband being a, a dimwit and not going yeah. back out onto the, gri- onto the uh, deck and turning off the grill? Yeah. Well, maybe both. <laughs> All right. I mean, I'm, I'm, only, I'm only here to give information. I don't know. Whatever you do with it, is that's up to you afterwards. He needs right. to tie a little string yeah. around his finger, and, and that way he can remember to go turn it off. Here's what you, here's what you need right. to do. This is what I do, Laura, and uh, tell your husband, because he's obviously a fan. Uh, every time I start the burn off, I set a timer for six minutes, and that way it beeps, and I'm like, oh, what the hell is that? Oh, got to go turn off the grill. And then I get up and turn it off, and there you go. Or you can. do you have natural gas in the house? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what? When you go to the stove, is it electric or does fire come out of the burners? <laughs> That's a good way to tell. She doesn't know. Okay. Yes, we do. I guess that my question is I didn't know if we had an accessible <laughs> natural gas. Oh. Line. All right. That was well, awesome. if you have, uh, if you can pipe into natural gas, you have a plumber come over, he can convert your propane grill into natural gas, and that way you don't have to. You know, continually consume 20 pound bottles of propane that you forget to turn off. However, it could make the heating bill go up a little bit higher in the house. That's true. And you put Hank Hill out of business. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who needs that? <laughs> Well, uh, Greg, I have to tell you, uh, thank you for uh, letting us be on your show so that I could feel really, really not like a smart person. Uh, no, I'm kidding. But uh, your information is always so interesting, and we love having you here on Broad Topics. We, can we have you back multiple times? This would, I mean, me, four ladies, I could, I could never say no. Yay. So, we love that you know, whenever. We call you the guy who puts the heat in Cleveland. That's right. The guys who put the heat and the meat in Cleveland. Uh, and of course, this is what we found out here is this works because I'm doing a live show right now too, and you're interviewing me. But you're on my like specific radio thing here after the first hour airs over there. This has been a fabulous uh, kind of back and forth to realize that two live shows can coexist and kind of interview and talk with each other on two different stations. It's outstanding. We are breaking. We are a marvel of internet radio. I'm telling you. Yes, we are. Absolutely. Well, I certainly appreciate all the time you've given me, and you've actually listened to me ramble at uh, length about nothing. And the next time you want to have me on, just let me know. I'm more than happy to do it. Greg, you have such a sexy voice. Don't hurt nobody. Uh, Stacy, <laughs> thank you, baby. Not bad yourself. You like our new host? Yes. <laughs> Hook me up. Uh, find me on Twitter. BBQ Central Show. <laughs> well, thank you for uh, letting us chat with you, Greg, and, and enjoy Cleveland, and we'll have you back again soon, and hopefully vice versa. All right, ladies, thanks very much for the time. Bye-bye, Bye-bye Greg. Greg. Bye. Yeah. There we go. What do we think? Instant feedback. Come on. What do we think? So 22 minutes after the top of the hour, and I thought honestly that it was going to be a little bit more horrific on the technical side of things. But it turned out that it was great. I mean, who doesn't want to know about the, 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 especially you guys online, who doesn't want to know about the basic, what do you do when the gas turns on? My husband will turn off the gas. Grill. What can I do about that? You're going to yell at me about giving you proper information, but your husband doesn't remember to turn off the gas grill. You know, it's called a timer, buddy. Look up, go to Target, get one for uh, buck three eighty. They're on sale, two for twenty five cents right now. If you go to Fred's Music and BBQ dot com, you can buy twenty five different timers that match your needs and different colors as well. I should have mentioned a thermometer. You need to have a thermometer too if you're a griller uh, or a barbecuer as well. Eight seven seven four four eight zero four three three is the number to call. Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com is the email address. Again, I know we talked to Dave during the third segment of last hour, but what I want to remind you is, uh, A, that Dave uh, Bosca from Butcher Barbecue is a new sponsor of the show, and B, you need to go check out his products, butcherbbq.com, and of course he is doing that free sauce thing right now, where if you go over to butcherbbq.com and then send him an email and let him know that you were listening to the show live right now, he will send you a bottle of free barbecue sauce. 
paid shipping and everything. It doesn't get any better than that. All right, let's go ahead and break away for a second. Uh, take a call. Uh, area code 818, name and where you're calling from. Uh, I'm Dave, and uh, I'm from Kansas City. This is David. Hey, David. How are you, buddy? Hang on. I had to turn my audio down. Oh, good boy. I was going to say, you're going to get caught in the echo monster there in a second if you keep listening to the radio. Yeah. Right, what can I do for you tonight, Dave? No, just uh, watching in. I thought that was a great segment you just had. Uh, actually, I thought the last couple of segments were really great. Did, did you like the... Uh, you. Did, you, you told me that you were too big for me, so I figured I'd just call you and see if I can get on in. I, I told you uh, that I was too big for you? Yeah, you told me you were going too big, and uh, and uh, you were going to take my call, so I figured I'd just try and give it a shot and see, and here I am. So that's kind of cool, ain't it? I, I don't recall saying that I was too big for anybody. Oh, okay. Maybe that was uh, uh, just having fun. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, well, let me let me ask you a question, Dave, and don't lie like I know you want to. Was your favorite part of the oh. last segment the fact that I had four women on at the same time, or did you find the actual information that I was disseminating to be somewhat accurate? Ooh, both. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree. I, actually, I thought the I thought the experiment was great. I thought the fact that you were trying something new and to have to be interviewed while you were, you know, on your show. Actually, it was perfect. The audio was perfect, and it went well. One of the best things that's ever happened to the Internet is the fact that uh, Skype has come around. And when you have two people that do Skype, you've maybe noticed, I don't know how many shows you've listened to in the past, Dave, but uh, you can always tell when I've talked to somebody on the phone, and you can always tell when I'm talking to somebody on Skype because the people in Skype sound like they're actually doing the show in studio with me, and the people that are doing it via telephone, well, sound like they're on a telephone. Uh, so by far, one of the best yeah. things that have ever happened on the Internet has been Skype, and I certainly appreciate that. Wait. Go ahead. Wait, 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 wait. You you had Skype so you can see them? No, 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 no. It's not done through any type of video. L.A. Talk Radio doesn't have any type of video feed that is oh. going on over there. So no, no reason to get uh, potentially jealous that I was seeing something that you guys were not. <laughs> Believe me, you know I would have tried to work that feed over to everybody else. So uh, I'm not that kind of a guy. I don't want to keep it to myself. I want to spread it around and make sure everybody feels the love. Cool, cool, cool. All right, uh, Dave, since you called well, in, I want to make sure that you don't go away empty-handed. Do you have any interest in picking up some rooftop barbecue sauce? Oh, absolutely. Always. All right, so here's what you need to do, Dave. You need to send me your shipping info, and it's greg at com, and just reference that you won the rooftop barbecue sauce, and I'll go ahead and forward that down to Andy, and we'll get you hooked right up. All right, then. All right. There you go. All right, well, thanks for calling in tonight, Dave. I certainly appreciate you uh, taking the time to do it. You have fun. Keep it up. All right, have a great night. It's Dave, Kansas. Kansas City, did you say? I can't remember where he's from. I'm too big for him. <laughs> Kansas. What am I too big for anybody? You kidding me? A, I couldn't be more of a nobody, I think. Yeah, I thought the sound quality was uh, very good on the Broad Topics interview. So I'm glad you guys uh, stuck around. Uh, quick feedback. Anybody have a particular favorite portion of the interview that you would like to share? Because, uh, you know, I thought, you know, when people ask me, and believe it or not, people ask me about grilling and barbecue and some some tricks of the trade. And really, barbecue or grilling for me, it's always those three or four things uh, when it comes. You know, you got to preheat the grill. You got to do proper grill maintenance. You got to burn it off after you're done cooking. And for crying out loud, when you put the meat down on the grill grate, don't get after it in the first five seconds. Just let it sit there and hang out for a little bit for crying out loud. Just relax. Uh, area code 516, name and where you're calling from. Hey, Greg. It's Don from Long Island. How you doing today? Don, how are you, buddy? Real good, real yeah. good. Doing excellent. What's up? Hey, just wanted to pick your brain and anybody else online who uh, has used the Mojo Bricks either on a Weber Smoky Mountain or on any offset type cooker. Well, here's what I can tell you. A, that I have not used those yet, although I do have uh, some Mojo Bricks coming to me uh, in short order. And... Uh, let me see if I can find it here because I was just corresponding uh, back and forth with Dave, or with uh, Fred, 
about these. Uh, let's see, because I told him I, he asked me what I cooked on, and he said I said I had the, the Weber Smoky Mountains. Okay, so here's what he says: uh, In a Weber Smoky Mountain, using the Minion method, one brick will smoke for nine hours. So that's some pretty substantial right. smoke uh, compared to what maybe, the, and, and you're probably burying a few handfuls of wood chunks otherwise down into the charcoal and all that stuff. So you put the one brick in there, you do the minion med, you're going to get nine hours of smoke. So that seems pretty substantial to me. And from what I understand, uh, and I've heard from John Dawson from Patio Daddio BBQ, who's used them as well, the flavor and the cleanliness of the smoke flavor is second to none. And this is why they seem to be gaining a lot of popularity out there. Okay, definitely want to try them. Yeah, definitely. So uh, have you placed your order yet? I have not. I wanted to talk to you first because, you know, we get a lot of our good information from you. Well, thank you. And you have until 11 o'clock, so it's a half an hour from now. If you go in and put in your order now, you get an extra four pounds of uh, Mojo Brick. So you can pick the flavors that you want, uh, and that's a $7 value. You're still going to get the 56% off less shipping. Uh, but now if you want an extra cherry or extra oak or whatever, just uh, let Fred know in the comments section, and he will add that just for the live listeners tonight. How great is Fred right now? That's cool. Yeah. Just Mojo Radio is the radio it's the discount code, right? Coupon code Mojo Radio to get 56% off your order right now. Who's better than that? Nobody's better. Well, I'm better than that, of course. <laughs> Have a great week, Greg. All right, Don, take care. There he is, Don, representing Long Island. Let me tell you what's great about Long Island. Don and Ice Teas, baby. Yeah, suck them down like Coca-Cola. No pecan. I believe it is uh, maple and oak and cherry. And it seems that cherry is a very popular flavor amongst uh, those that are starting to use them in competition. They've been getting very good reviews. Fred was on here a while ago. Is he not on here anymore mojo bricks so if you're going to go order now during the show to get that extra special free feature right now you're going to go to mojobricks.com and you will see uh, my little radio show logo over there on the right hand side on the splash page so just go ahead and click on there and then make your order during checkout Put in Mojo Radio, and then there's going to be a comment section. Say, I'm listening live right now because he's going to be able to see the timestamp on the order and say, I want an additional cherry and oak or two cherry or whatever the case may be. Uh, who was on uh, anybody on the instant chat that has actually used the Mojo Bricks that would like to call in and give us a first-person narrative on how they feel they work? You're more than welcome to do that. would love to have you on. Uh, thanks again to Toby Shea from Bar- British Barbecue Society for joining me. And thanks to Dave Bosca, who I was in the middle of doing a, a read for before I got the plug in, before I got the uh, call in. Uh, Dave is a creator of some of the most popular injections out there on the competition scene. There are others out there, to be sure. There was actually some before Dave. Uh, but Dave has really refined and perfected a process that is not only hitting the flavor palettes in wonderment of people just eating it in the backyard, but they are affecting judges' palettes to a large degree of popularity in the positive fashion at competitions as well. And look, if you're going to take part in competition, you want to give yourself the best chance to win, and using butcher barbecue injections are the way to go, obviously. Plus, he has rubs, and he's got this new sauce out as well. Dave, do we still have sauce left? Uh, if you're listening, go ahead and give me a report if we still have sauce left to, uh, to get out because people love free sauce. But you want to give yourself the best chance to win. The reason that I don't compete is because I don't want to spend $600 to get my ass kicked by everybody else and then have to go turn tail and say, well, how did it go? Well, I lost it. I didn't win any money. I can spend better money in my backyard using butcher barbecue products, feeding the masses for $600, then I can go and get my ass handed to me. I'm not ashamed to sit here and tell you, the centralites, that if I don't really have a good shot going in to win the first time, I'm probably not going to do it. Reasons why, A, I hate soccer. B, I hate golf. C, I will not compete in barbecue competitions. There's a whole other reason to the whole barbecue competition thing that I'm not going to bother getting into at the moment. But it has to do with the human element of judging 
and how things are progressing right now until there has been a break in flavor profile, a noticeable shift in things that are going on in the world of competition barbecue. I will remain on the sidelines at the moment. And then, Chad, I tell you what, I'll go cook for you in Pittsburgh. Okay, well, first of all, I would never step foot in Pittsburgh. That's like saying, I don't know. I don't even know if that's like saying anything else. Cleveland, Pittsburgh, fire and ice, water and oil, winning and Pittsburgh, losing. Get that big stuff out of here. Get out of here, Pittsburgh. However... I, if you want to come and work for me, I'll be more than happy to go out and take uh, lead cook duties, and then I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. You know I'd love to come and cook with you, Chatters. You know I would. That's Whiskey Bent Barbecue, by the way. Love those guys. Uh, so arm yourself with the best way of winning, and that's going to be with Butcher Barbecue products. And again, you're giving 25 bottles of free sauce out right now if you go to the... Uh, whatchamacallit, I have uh, 25 free bottles of sauce. You go to butcherbbq.com, click on the email link, tell them you're listening to the show live right now, and he will send you free sauce. I'm going to go ahead and put in my orders. Well, I love free sauce. I have to try, oh, I did try the Albuquerque rub this weekend, as I, or this past week, as I had said, and it was you just a little bit of unique flavoring in there that isn't in a lot of the normal order. Uh, by the way, Shane, if you're ordering the Mojo Bricks, it's Mojo Radio. Mojo Radio. And then specify those extra uh, two bricks or the four pounds of wood that you want, uh, oak or maple or cherry. Mojo Radio. 56% off right now. Uh, I thought the rub was actually very good. The container that it came in was able to properly quote four butts. So, depending on how heavy you put stuff on, I mean, I don't know if you're a big rub putter on or when you're doing butts or whatever. The I mean, everybody's a little different in process. I understand that, but I was able to get the, that bottle. I think it was a eight or ten ounce bottle or whatever it was. Uh, I was able to cover four butts to my specifications when I'm doing them here in the backyard. So that's always nice. Uh, to get uh, you know a total of uh, I think they're about eight nine pounds a piece so you know we're looking at right around 40 50 pounds of butts uh, pre-cook of course it all shrinks down afterwards and it, the bark was absolutely great there was just a little bit of heat which I like and I'm very excited to try that sauce out as well that's albuquerque seasonings.com and uh, we thank Kirk for that and then I believe we gave away the rooftop to Dave, uh, rooftop barbecue, so that's good. Let's check the emails and see what's happening over here. Thanks again also to the ladies over at Broad Topics for kind of doing that joint uh, joint interview. What is going on here? Notice changes to the Kentucky Conceal Carry Law. State of Nevada now recognizes the Kentucky. I don't have a Kentucky Sorry, this has nothing to Changes to Ohio concealed carry law. The following are some links to information coming up on changes for Ohio concealed carry law. 90-day implementation period, blah, 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 blah. Bottom line. Oh, okay, here we go. Reasons to move to Ohio. Bottom line. Huge improvements to Ohio concealed carry laws in these areas. Restaurant carry. Finally. <laughs> It will go from being a felony to being okay to carry a firearm into an establishment that sells alcohol for consumption on the premises as long as you are not consuming alcohol yourself or you haven't been drinking prior to going in there because you cannot carry a handgun in the state of Ohio and have consumed any type of alcohol prior. Car carry as well. Car carry. It will go from a current four restrictions on how you can transport a handgun in your vehicle with a permit, dropping the restrictions as long as you have a permit. So right now, you have to, well, not now because there's new law, but you had to put it in some type of a lockable container, although it wasn't allowed to be locked, and it had to be out in the open for you to be able to access the gun if you needed it. Now, with the new law, I can have it in the holster like I would normally carry it uh, because I 
don't normally to let the gun fly around in my car when I'm carrying. Uh, but I can have it on the seat. I can have it in the glove box. I can put a seat holster in it if I want. Technically speaking, if we're breaking it down, and we're getting way off base on the uh, barbecue topic here. But I can have what is called a gun, car, uh, a car gun, and a personal uh, personal gun. So I can put in a holster on the side seat, just stick a gun down there, and then I can keep my Glock 26 on my hip as I walk around uh, patrolling and looking for creeping marauders to shoot, uh, just to say that I did. All right, so there we go. Great new changes to the Ohio concealed carry law. That's just coming in from uh, my email. Here's Paul. Uh, He won the – what did he win? I don't know. Toby Shea. Uh, great. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. My bad, Toby. Sorry. They put on uh, British Barbecue Society puts on four events a year. So there's two more left. My bad. I thought he said they only put on one. Maybe there was like the one major event. I don't remember. Uh, let me get that uh, from Laura. And then we have new uh, cooking tips that will be loaded in from Kent Whitaker. So the email box is ablaze as we talk right now. 877-448-0433 in case you want to get in on the show tonight. Greg at the BBQ Central Show dot com is the email address. Look at Michael Scruggs just ordering the party pack from Butcher's Barbecue and the free sauce. Thank God somebody's doing it. Uh, Shane Draper uh, okay am I missing some conversation here? Let's see. That's a that's a dumb amendment. What are we talking about here, Huckles? Let's uh, let's transition into gun talk here. Call in if you want to man up. Are you saying that it was dumb for Ohio to make it legal to carry into bars? Is that what you're saying? Answer me now. I will not be uh, I will not be waited on. Well, why is that? Look, let me tell you something. For instance. Here's one thing that we need, and I understand, look, if you don't like guns, that's fine. You don't have to like guns. I'm not here to convince you that you need to like guns or you don't. Okay, it's a barbecue show for crying out loud. However, there is a Second Amendment currently in the Constitution that allows people to bear arms. There are states in this union that allow people to carry guns concealed through a permit. And here's the deal, Huck. This is why it is a good idea for Ohio to have changed that law. Because, think about it this way. If I am a criminal, does it even matter if I have a concealed carry permit or not? Yes or no? Of course it doesn't. I'm a criminal. I'm going to commit crime, hence the word criminal. I'm going to walk into your business establishment that clearly has a no-gun sign hanging it as I walk through it with my gun on me with no permit, and I will rob you and I will kill you regardless of whatever signage, whatever laws that Ohio has or whatever. It doesn't matter. When I'm a criminal, I don't care. That's why I'm a criminal. I will pack heat. I will get it illegally. I will not register it. I will not take concealed carry permits. I will go in where it says no guns allowed because I'm not a law-abiding citizen. I'm a criminal. So that's number one. Secondly, if I, a concealed carry weapons holder, have taken the time to obtain a permit legally and take hours and hours and hours of classes and shooting practice and I maintain my accuracy by going to the range once a week and I want to carry it, I'm allowed to do that. Why should I have to disarm because I'm going into a bar or because I'm going into a restaurant that serves liquor like a Olive Garden or an Applebee's. So before I would have to want to, uh, before I would go into that restaurant before, I would have to disarm and leave it in the car. Or to have to choose to not take it with me, right? Now, I can bring it into there, carry it with me, still follow the rules because that's what it is. That's what means when you have a permit, you have now uh, guaranteed... All right, well, you haven't guaranteed it, but you have set forth a precedent that you will now follow the rules of the state in order for you to continue to carry a weapon. Okay, that's what that means. So if I'm going to go in and carry my gun into a bar, I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to drink before. I'm not going to drink there. And unless I disarm at home, I'm not going to drink afterwards. These are laws. We're following the laws. So what are we talking about here? I don't understand why you don't agree with that. What's the difference? I'm a law-abiding citizen. Here we go. And someone in there can strong-arm you, and now you've given them a fire. Huck, we could have this discussion all day long. The, the, the people that are gun folks on here will understand the argument I'm about to make. Why 
would the person strong arm me and then take a firearm if they don't know? It's called concealed carry. You can't lift up your shirt in a bar and show everybody your weapon. It's called brandishing. You get arrested for that. I'm not going to take my gun out and go, hey, everybody, I got a gun. Shoot him up, motherfucker. Yeah. Hey. I want free beer for everybody. Boom, boom, boom. It doesn't work like that. You just go ahead and you get It's concealed carry. Okay. You're not going to know I have a gun because I'm not taking it out and showing at you, especially if you're very big and you could take it away from me. Okay? That's not how it works. People that don't like guns think very irrationally. If you didn't know me and we walked past each other on the street, you wouldn't know if I had a gun or not. I mean, how would you know? Because I don't have it out here waving it and saying, hey, everybody, I got a gun right here. I mean, it's crazy. What are you thinking about? So if I want to carry my gun, if I'm out with my friends and I choose to not want to drink and not have a ridiculously drunk, fall down, vomiting good time, which I love to have and pass out completely, which I've done on a few times. And instead, I want to go and visit, be a designated driver and decide to go ahead and carry my weapon. I have the opportunity now to do that where I didn't have it before. That's all it's saying. I don't have to, when I'm with my family and I choose that I'm not going to be drinking, to go to the Olive Garden if I'm carrying my gun and not have to leave it in the car now or not have to bring it with me because I know where I'm going because I'm thinking ahead because I'm a law-abiding freaking citizen. I can now have it with me and just go in and have dinner and have a pop and enjoy time with my family. And then nobody knows I have a gun. Who cares? Nothing changes except that I can just carry it in. For crying out loud. Huck, you need to really review your gun stances and then call in when you have a good argument to beat me down. Otherwise, shut up. It's not going to work. All right, hold on a second. Huck, were you, were you um, held up in the streets at some point by gunpoint or something? I don't get it. I mean, really, what's the deal? Who cares? They're just guns. It's not like anybody... uh, Guns don't kill people. People kill people, right? There you go. All right. So uh, I'm going to diverge off of uh, gun talk just for now and get into a little bit. Uh, Okay. Paul won the Albuquerque. All right. Um, You're right. He does live in... But I live in Cleveland. So, I mean, what's worse? That's just a bigger piece of crap city. Uh, Let me diverge here just for a second. And I know this is kind of like the last 20 minutes has nothing to do with uh, barbecue and grilling. So I have to talk about work just for a second. And please hang with me here because I'm about to educate uh, some of you and some of you people. uh, This might be a little bit repetitive. I happen to work currently in a retail environment for AT&T on the wireless side. We also sell some home products. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to be talking about cell phones. Cell phones are now obviously very prevalent, and uh, you can get them wherever you want. You have a number of different carriers to choose from, whether they be some some of the big main ones, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile, AT&T, whatever. Or do you, uh, you, like we have Boost around here too, and Virgin or whatever, like pay as you go. Uh, So you have a number of different options to choose from. But let's go ahead and talk about traditional postpaid accounts. These are ones that you go in and you say, hey, I would like to start a new service with you, company. And I go, okay, no problem. And you come in, we run your credit a little bit, make sure you don't need some deposit or you're a deadbeat on bills or whatever the case would be, like you would have a sprint. Just kidding. And after that, we've now determined that you are eligible for lines of service which is great. Everybody loves new lines of service. I get paid on new lines of service. You're going to get a new phone for a discounted price. And that's where the discussion starts, people. When we sign up for service or when you upgrade your phone, you are now re-signing. Oh, geez. I was just getting ready to do a tangent here, and now i got to back off here. Uh, Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios. Who's this? Huck Jr. Huck Jr. Huckles, what's up, buddy? Hey, I, I just just wanted to say real quick, I'm I'm not I'm not a like a gun carrying hater or anything like that. I'm just saying that you don't you don't go from being you know a safer stance to 
loosening it up when it comes to gun control. What's That's safe? All. What's safer about the stance? You there's you, you're not allowed to carry it. Come, coming into that that's safer no guns at all is safer than some guns regardless Here, of here's the, where here's where uh here's where the idea is flawed on your part and i'm just telling you okay i understand and i've been in a number of situations where if i go to a, an area i know okay well i can't carry here so if i'm carrying i go ahead and disarm i lock it in the car in my safe or whatever and i go in i abide by the law so if I decide that now I'm a criminal and I'm going to go to the bar, I am not going to follow the rules. I didn't get a permit. I didn't take the classes. I am not a law-abiding citizen. And I will shoot people in that bar whether I'm allowed in there or not with a gun. So, what, I mean, it doesn't make it less safe or more safe. If I'm a criminal, I'm going to commit criminal acts. If I'm a law-abiding citizen and I'm not going to drink and follow the letter of the law, why shouldn't I be able to take it in there? Why wasn't that the law and to start? Well, I'm not any type of legislator or politician, I although I could be president for crying out loud, and you could be my vice president, Huckles. I'm just say, we would be the first white and black uh, president and vice president ever. Well, I guess we'd be the second. Second. <laughs> yeah, well, but we would be the best. I'm that's saying, for law, sure. Law reversals like that is crazy. I know PA passed a law where they where they they required you to have motorcycle helmets. And then they said, ah, oh, no, you know what? You don't have to wear a helmet. That's, that's kind of silly to me. Well, we're talking about two different things, of course. But, I know. Uh, we're, we're talking the, about safer well, versus uh, right. not as safe, well, correct? No. What you're talking about riding around on a motorcycle, and if you fall off the motorcycle and you hit your head, you're going to die without a helmet, and you have a better chance of surviving it if you have a helmet on. That's safety, right? Correct. Okay, so if I am a criminal and I go into a bar with a gun completely disregarding the laws, I'm going to shoot people whether I have a concealed carry permit or not. And in fact, the way the law sits prior to that, if I had a concealed carry permit, I am going to legally disarm myself and put me into that bar where somebody doesn't care is going to shoot me anyway. How is that safer? Why does that make any difference? I'm just saying less less guns in a particular area is safer. If, if the gun is not there, it cannot be used against anyone. Regardless, you're 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 automatically saying everyone with permits are law abiding citizens. That that's the blanket you're given. What I am now, what I am saying. Greg Rimpy, we, all you can speak for is Greg Rimpy. Well, I can say through t- statistical data from uh, various gun outlets that people that uh, take right. <laughs> that people that take classes are knowingly upfront now educated on a bunch of laws that nobody ever knew about that you now have to adhere to and it would probably be a safe bet to say that the majority of those people aren't going to get a permit so they can then go commit crimes when they could have just done that before right yeah, I'm, I'm sure the statistics are with you. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure of that. But I'm just saying, I, you know, what? If, if it was the law from the beginning, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have any opinion on it. OK, that's, you know, you know, you know, whatever. You're allowed to take it in there and conceal a weapon. I just don't see going from I, I don't see laxing the law. That's all I'm saying. Let me ask you a question, Huckles, while I have you on here. Should we uh, take away all of the planes and all of the cars off the road because then there'll be no plane crashes or car accidents either? That would be safer. What if we uh, eliminate houses so there'll be no house fires and then nobody will die in house fires? I I know what you're saying. What if we get rid of all of the Internet and that way we don't have any more porno? Wait a second. Let's never do that. We always have to keep porn no matter what, right? What if you get rid of people? Then it'd be no one to shoot. You, you know, I, it, I it hear you. I'm with that, what except if, for if, us two. If, <laughs> I, I no, I, I understand you. what you're saying. I, I I hear where you're coming from, uh, and obviously we're not gonna. I'm not. I won't agree with your point. You're not gonna agree with my point. I see what you're saying. You're saying why I, invite I, more I, guns I, into a place that didn't normally allow them legally. Right, and and I totally understand where you're coming from, and and I under I, I totally understand it. I'm just saying that it's silly to me to reverse it. Y- you know, that's all. Huck, beat it. Jesus Christ, forget it. I'm right, you're wrong. My show. Good night now. Yeah. All right. 
here's uh, here's what I needed to to get across uh, before. I appreciate Huck for calling in, by the way. I just needed to move on. Um, when we're uh, we're talking about cellular service here, when you come in and we finally get that you signed up, and uh, for instance, here's the thing. One of the most popular phones out there, especially in AT&T store, and I know now in Verizon, is this iPhone. So you have the opportunity to get an iPhone 3GS from us. And this is going to be my example for the evening. But you have the iPhone 4. It's $199. If you sign a two-year agreement, the phone isn't $199. Okay? Huck, you're being summoned to call back. Feel free. The phone is not $199. Likewise, the iPhone 3GS, which is the 4's little brother is not really $49. Okay, this is what I'm saying. You're signing that contract for two years. So we can get back, we can make back as a company, AT&T or Verizon or Sprint, whoever it is you're signing a contract with, can get the money back for the phone. Okay, this is what I'm saying. There seems to be a lot of people that don't understand what the contract means. Look, don't uh, don't pretend like you're mad at me because I ran you off of my show. It's my show. If you're not going to see it my way, I'm not going to have you on. Away with you. Uh, look, you're signing the contract because the phone in actuality, the phone in actuality, the iPhone 4, hey, guess what? Here's a secret. It's six hundred and fifty dollars. That's right. So when you get it for that hundred and ninety nine dollars, or when you get the iPhone three GS for forty nine dollars, guess what? That's a four hundred and seventy four dollar phone. Okay. So we sign you to the contract, or not we, but the company signs you to the contract to recoup the four hundred and seventy four dollars. I could make an argument, of course, that. AT&T or Verizon or whoever is losing money every single time we do an upgrade or get a new customer in there because you are leaving with a $49 phone, iPhone 3GS, and we are paying Apple $474. That's not the best business, hence the contract. Now, here's where things get shaky, where the consumer becomes a little overbearing and having a new perspective on the other side. uh, I just wanted to make sure that we all understand this and that we are educated in the world of cellular phones and how contracts work and how prices of phones work and what the real price is and what the contract price is because they're two different goddamn things. The iPhone 3GS is a $474, no commitment, no contract phone. You can go into the store, you can plop down 500 bucks, you own it. Then you can put it on service. And after three months, if you don't like us, you can cancel it, and there's no early termination fees. That's what happens when you decide after 16 months that you don't like AT&T anymore, that you don't like Verizon anymore. You're like, you know what, F them, I'm out of here. And you switch over, and then obviously you get this huge-ass bill from the particular carrier that you just told to F off. That's an early termination fee. We didn't make our money back. That's how we're going to get our money back from the phone. Early termination fees. I'm not taking this phone call yet. So here's my customer uh, last week. 816, you're going to have to wait. I'm I'm in the middle of something here. 816, uh, just wait. My customer, this customer comes in today. Proceeds to, uh, and I know things are going to go south right off the bat when he tells me, I have been a long-time customer of AT&T, and I've spent thousands of dollars with you, and I have never looked anywhere else, and blah, blah, blah. This is like starting a sentence out by saying, I'm not a racist, but. I don't mean to insult you, but no offense, but anything that you're about to say after this is going to be very, very bad for both of us. Nevertheless. So he's telling me about how great he is and how he doesn't shop around. And as far as I'm concerned, as a consumer, that's your fault. You should always shop around and get the best deal and get the best service for you. He produces an iPhone 3GS that is completely freaking smashed. I mean, completely freaking smashed. The screen is all over the place. It is shedding little shards of glass all over the place. It is a nightmare. However... It still works. It's just the glass on the front part of the phone. The LCD underneath it is fine. This is a fix. You can fix this phone. I was very excited to see how it wasn't completely damaged. I said, sir, this is great news. He didn't understand why. I said, look at this. It works. Sure, there's shards of glass getting stuck into my finger right now, but if you look... 
You can type all the icons. We can access all the various parts of the phone. This is just the glass that you've dropped the phone, but you have uh, the ability to fix this. And here's this card. And I gave him to a card, a company here in Cleveland called Phone Ambulance. This is their business. They fix screens and broke phones and water damaged phones. I'm sure they're going to be like this huge internet sensation and people are going to be shipping them phones and all this other crap. Uh, but I met this guy. He does great work. And he can take the screen off your broke ass iPhone and switch it out with a new screen for 65 bucks. It doesn't get any better than that. So I tell this guy that and he's like, oh, no, 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 I don't think so. Okay, well, let me look at your account. So I'm typing up the account. Here he is. He is eligible to what? Upgrade. So now he can get a new iPhone 3GS or an iPhone 4 if he wants to for the $49 price or the $199 price as long as he recommits for another two years. So you have the phone ambulance option, sir. You have the ability to upgrade if you want to. Which one would you like to do? I would like to do neither, young man. Well, why is that? I've given you two great options. I've actually given you options. Some other companies do not give you options. They make you buy a $200 replacement phone that sucks. But I've given you outside-of-the-box options. I've given you standard options. Which one would you like to do? Well, I would rather do neither, and I would not like to. I will start shopping around if uh, my demands aren't met. Well, you tell me. As a person dealing in retail, sir, you tell me what you would like to do, have done, to make this right for you. And then I'll tell you where we could possibly meet in the middle. And here's what he wanted to do. He wanted me to give him a brand spanking new iPhone 3GS at no cost, mind you. And let him use it like a rental car or something until the iPhone 5 came out. And then he wanted to give the iPhone 3GS back. So he could upgrade at that point into an iPhone 5. (laughs) What? Are you kidding me? I said, hey, it's a $474 phone. You're going to have to upgrade or use the $65 fix with phone ambulance. It's A or B. Well, why won't you let me just up? I've spent thousands of dollars with you. This is I've never shopped around. This will cause me to shop around. I'm trying to be very patient with this man. I'm explaining to him how contracts work, how actual cost of the phone works, all of this stuff. And this is wonderful. So I was finally able to use this example to a customer. I said, Mr. Customer, let me give you a different story in relations to how this is actually going to work. I said, you have cellular service with us, yes? Yes. You pay every month, yes. Why? So I can continue to keep service. Exactly. That's exactly why you pay it. You pay it to keep service. You're not doing me a favor by paying the bill every month. You're not doing me a favor. You're doing yourself a favor by living up to your part of the contract. You said that you would pay a per month fee to get cell service, and that's what you're doing. If you go to the gas pump, if you go to the gas pump, can you say, well, I would rather pay a different amount? Do you call your car insurance and say, nah, I've had a a car accident. And I would like you to get me a new Ford, and uh, once my car is fixed, I'll give you the Ford back, and then I'll go buy a new Cadillac. What are we talking about here? That's that's completely outrageous. Sir, you broke the phone. You dropped it out of your fat, sponge, sausage fingers, and it's your fault. You broke it. I'm giving you options, and you're not taking them. Why won't you take them? Oh, so lesson learned here, folks. Lesson learned here. Cost of the phone, there's an actual cost of the phone, there's contract pricing of the phone. And if you have the ability to upgrade, you're going to have to use it or you're going to have to find a third party resource to fix your phone. And sometimes that doesn't even matter. But don't come to me after you've dropped your phone out of your fat freaking fingers and then demand a new phone only to use it as a rentile to upgrade into a better phone whenever the hell that is. Who even knows when the iPhone 5 is going to be coming out? Nobody knows. Could be three months from now. Give me a break, a-hole. Sorry about that. All right, I did promise a phone call. Area code 816, name and where you're calling from. Dave Baldine again. Hey, Greg, this is Dave from Wired Barbecue. Hey. Been listening in on you all night. How are you, Dave? Good. I'm good. good. What's up, buddy? Do you buddy? mind if I uh, 
pimp out my new show coming up in the next couple, two or three weeks here on the Outdoor Cooking Channel. Please do. Uh, Kevin Bevington is one of my close personal friends who we'll be talking with on this show on the 12th, which will be next week. So go ahead. Lock on. Well, I, I just want to say I'm coming aboard, and uh, hopefully we can do some live stuff uh, on Friday nights and uh, do some live competition barbecue. And when there's not competition, I'll just bring it live back here on my back por- porch and patio and, nice. and, and, and do some segments out here. Sounds awesome. And when is that going to start again? Um, I'm actually uh, looking at the calendar and thinking it's probably going to happen around the 22nd as far as my official live launch. I mean, I've been doing it already. I've been testing it. And it's kind of pretty cool. There's a lot of bugs I need to work out, but I think we'll be ready for the 22nd in Olathe, Olathe, Kansas. All right. Well, that sounds absolutely fantastic, Dave. So uh, be sure to continue to promote it once it gets a little sooner. I'm sure we can uh, have you back on to uh, actually talk about a little bit more in depth and what you're going to be covering and some events that you're going to be doing in the near future. So uh, definitely love to have you on. Oh, yeah, we've got a full schedule, so I, I can't wait to start. All right, well, we'll look forward to that. Thanks for calling in tonight, Dave. All right, have fun. Yeah. Hey, great show, man. You, you're kicking ass. Oh, well, I appreciate it. Thanks for the love, Dave. And Dave Baldeen from Wired BBQ. All right, look, I'm way over. I'm sorry, Kevin. I'm sorry. But it would only be a rerun for me, right? Am I over? Kevin, I'm providing you with top-notch non-barbecue show for the last half an hour. Rempy Rants. That's a segment. Rempy Rants. All right. Thanks to everybody in the chat room right now. Don't forget, uh, Butcher Barbecue offering free sauce to the first 25 people. Go over to butcherbbq.com and then send them an email. Tell them you're listening to the show live right now. We're only on for like a minute. And then uh, you get free sauce for the first 25. Also, uh, I believe the Mojo Bricks thing has come to an end. You can try it, though. You still get 56% off your order, whether you do it now or uh, later. Tell them you were listening live. You'd like uh, four extra bricks or whatever it is, four extra pounds. Thanks to Toby Shea from British Barbecue Society. BBBQS.com is that website. Check it out. See what's happening over in England. Also, thanks to newest sponsor of the show, Dave Bosco from Butcher Barbecue. Yeah. Talking about injections, how they work. Also, his big uh, third place finish this past weekend out in Kansas in Girard. Big show already lined up for next Tuesday. I'm going to help remind you to control the grill grate rust population. If you have raw cast iron, be sure to treat them with spam or season them after each and every use, and you will prevent rust from forming. Until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now.